Speaking of home. Boy, that thing's brutal. Who came up with that? What rocket scientist came up with that rejoin? Yeah. Boy, that is pathetic. But nevertheless, it's probably one of our uh, rocket scientists, like I said. Yeah. Station's crawling with them. Yes, it's crawling with something. <laughs> How are things we, today? We need an exterminator. Yeah. Things today so far are great. Sun is shining. It's looking really nice. How about uh, Michael Jackson? You know who had a great comment about, about that? Jay yeah. Leno said, I wonder how Martha Stewart feels right now. Right. <laughs> she made one lousy phone call to a broker. Yeah. Robert and... Blake takes a walk. OJ takes a walk. Yep. This uh, freak takes a walk. And she uh, went spent time in the slammer. So well, she's an uppity uh, rich bitch. And then there was Letterman's line. Yeah, that's what she went to jail for. Uh, Saddam would like to have his trial moved to Santa Maria, California. <laughs> yeah, or I think anywhere in California yeah. where they never convict anybody famous. It's just pathetic. And then the worst part of the whole deal is, I mean, the media, I just can't take them anymore. I, I think I will lose my mind. They'll put me in a rubber room if I pay any attention to the American media anymore. They're just crazy people. Yeah. And all these uh, idiots coming on now, well, uh, can he resurrect his career? And uh, can he do this? And he's doing this. This really frosts my ass. And, and the world is post-trial press conference with the entire jury and even the alternates. And the one, the juror number one there who was on last night, he says, oh, well, uh, I have no doubt that he molested boys over the time. I mean, he slept with a one kid 365 nights, but uh, they just couldn't prove it in this case. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. I wonder when his next sleepover is going to be. And Oh, yeah, well, they asked Thomas Mesero that this morning, and he said, well, uh, he's not going to be conducting things the same way. In other words, it's going to be more discreet, and they're going to have to, like, sign. The parents are going to have to, like, sign a contract, a, uh, whatever, a non-compete or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, who knows what it's going to be. But Bill Kamal, it was non-compete. Yeah, right. I don't think he can compete with that one. Bill yeah. likes him a little bit older, I think. He don't like him at 9 or 10. Oh, well. Very sad. Very tragic. Another piece of Americana, man. Yeah. That, and then uh, did you see the jury? Yeah. Yeah. Now, how would you like to have your life on the line with that bunch? Well, what a what a bunch of idiots! First of all, the one uh, the the chubby abroad with the real ruddy cheeks. They said that every time a celebrity came in the courtroom, that she was like gaga eyed. She was just going nuts, and that she kept like winking at the, this one and that one. Yeah, and how do, who oh. selects these juries? How do they? How does a how does a prosecutor allow that to happen? Exactly. And then the two punks on there, the two young guys who looked. I'm not even sure they were old enough to be on a jury. What was that all about? They, they look like the uh, the idiots outside in that uh, crowd. And speaking of crowd, oh, and the big crowd of support. There couldn't have been like more than 50 people out there. And then by the by the time the thing was over, maybe a hundred. And then over there at Neverland, there were like maybe 40 or 50 people. Oh, hundreds of screaming supporters. What are they talking about? It reminds me of the uh, Alien thing when there were like uh, 10 people standing at 79th and Biscayne by the INS office and channel, uh, whichever channel it was, I think it was 10, is on there. Oh, and the crowds are massing out here in protest. There were like 15 people out there. Yeah, they, the media really does. Uh, they're they're they killing America. They, the, the media just a bunch of whores, grave robbers. They're lunatics. They're crazy people. I see now where uh, a couple of actresses have gotten together and they're trying to get some tougher laws passed against the paparazzi that stalk them. I'll tell you what we ought to have a law, and that is against Nancy Grace being on the air. Oh, yeah. Where did she come from? I have not. You know what she is? She's another Larry King creation. I now, saw your good, her on your Larry good, King. personal buddy. First he invented Ross Perot. Now he invented this bitch. She's just everywhere. She's got, she's got shows on channels that haven't been invented yet. I saw her the other night on Larry King, and I was just running through the dials. Uh -huh. And I didn't... I had, that's the first time I had ever seen her. Thinking, oh, brother. that? Well, that phony oh, southern drawl. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, Fran. Yeah. So much, Fran. She... Yeah, and the interesting part of it is the ironic part. I was watching, as soon as the bulletin came on, I flipped over to Court TV, and, of course, there she was with that phony act of hers and Diane Diamond and this one, all these regulars they've had on for weeks. And all of a sudden, it got really dark out, and it started thundering here and lightning and storming, and it knocked. It was really about a, the judge at this point, to give you the timeline, the judge is opening the envelopes, and he's reading the jury's verdict. And all of a sudden, court TV on my cable gets knocked off the air. It was just fantastic. So I switched over to MSNBC. But it was just such fantastic timing. It was great. Well, I was not into that trial. I just 
waited for the verdict. I didn't watch it. Yeah, well, you knew what the verdict was going to be. Could there be possibly any doubt? I mean, I had the story from the Inquirer long before the trial ever started about the Jesus juice. Months before, I was uh, screaming about that on the air. It was in the Inquirer. It was no secret. And about his little uh, villa behind the uh, mirage out there in Vegas. Well, speaking of Vegas, now Steve Wynn says, oh, uh, he wants to bring Michael Lynn to have uh, make make him a regular like Wayne Newton at one of his casinos in Vegas. Isn't that great? That was... uh... You know, you know who was that was Donald Trump. Now that's right. It was Trump who said that. Yeah, they're already Trump heat. the chump. They're going to open a, a new casino where the frontier is. Yeah, and uh, they were going to feature Michael Jackson, but they backtracked from that now. They got so much bad press over it that they decided that uh, they would withdraw from the Michael Jackson deal. Oh, you mean it's kind of like when uh, 940 was going to give OJ his own show every day? Remember that? Oh yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, I guess not. The sponsors are kind of like uh, upset. <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'm going Oh, maybe he could, have, he could do the infomercials for Ron Popeil's knife set. <laughs> huh? They could sell the Ginsu knives on that show. would be good. I remember when he used to have those demonstrations, the knife demonstrations. Right. How they can slice your cabbage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> O.J. would love to have one of those. In fact, right, right in uh, by George there, there's uh, that old machete sitting on that uh, counter there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time Gildy comes in, he runs. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, have a great day. It's you Tuesday, too. so I don't think you're going to lose too much today. There's not much nah, going on on Tuesday. Thursday, I leave for Louisville. Well, what's that I'll for? I'll be at Churchill to Stephen Foster on Saturday. Oh, it's give me a break. My the life Stephen in Foster. racing. Yep. Oh, brother. I never even heard of that race. What is that? It's uh, <laughs> it's a stakes for it's, older horses. It's an excuse to be out of town. Good thinking. It's a, Well, I'm getting paid. It's a, it's a yeah. stakes for older oh, horses. Oh, I didn't notice who we got on Friday, George. <laughs> What? Don't cut. Oh. Don't cut. Oh. Wow. What a treat that'll be. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Win a bundle. Yeah, right. Goodbye. Jeff is sick and needs help badly. Blame it on my childhood. Blame it on my lawyer says it's worked quite well for some. You fairy. Cause I've been looking around For an excuse to explain my quirks You can't recognize me My doctors have bleached out my ethnicity And I keep children This song, that's really bad. Yes. Blame it on my childhood. And all of those toys that I never had. The only G.I. show in my life was my trunk. Happy Father's Day, Joe. Seven and five sixty WQM Tuesday June fourteen it looks like to me wow these days they're just zooming right along before you know it it's going to be like uh, Friday June twentieth uh, whatever it is seventeenth here's a fact that says I thought this take on a Michael Jackson verdict might be a good read for you I thought it summed up the whole mess quite well MSNBC dot MSN dot com slash ID slide blah, 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 a bunch of a bunch of numbers yeah a lot of typing. okay if I get around to it I'll check it out probably won't but thanks anyway. Okay, let's see. Let's uh, take things out of order today. We got Alexa on a beaded curtain. We got three pictures of Alexa, who's just some chick. That sounds like a hooker to me, Alexa. Okay, or a toolbox. She probably drives a Lexus. 
But at any rate, there she is, Alexa, and uh, our beaded curtain is only uh, nine days away, nine, from uh, history. Yeah. And so the good news is that George and Josh got their Flavor Wave uh, ovens yesterday. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm going to use it tonight. Are you really? I How set it up last night. Good. You set it up? Yeah. I'm telling you right now, that thing will be, you will use it every day of your life. You may say, I may be exaggerating a little bit, but it's pretty no, close. No, probably not. <laughs> probably not? No. Well, well, why not? I use the foreman pretty much every day, so that's going to be my substitute. Yeah. So. Anyway, here's the uh, first poll we took yesterday. We sneaked the Michael Jackson poll in there after that uh, nauseating verdict. Yeah, yeah, how is this possible? You know, how can, how can the uh, prosecutors be so incompetent, the DAs all over California? What is that all about? They picked the wrong case. The 24-year-old, uh, uh, what is he, Sunday school deacon or whatever the hell this other kid is yeah. who got molested, who is Lily White, who's got, I mean, they, he hasn't got a pimple on his record. And he testified that he was molested by Michael Jackson. So they don't bring that case to trial. They bring this with this slimeball family of compulsive liars. But, see, Michael Jackson wasn't on trial here. The mother was on trial. The kid a little bit, but mostly the mother, your mama. And like the one bitch juror said, oh, when she started snapping her fingers at me, I thought to myself, don't you snap your fingers at me, you bitch, you slut. How do you like that? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what they were thinking. They hated her from the beginning. You bitch, mm -hmm. you slut, you whore. Yeah, there you go. So that, that was what I was on trial there, not the fact we got a, a crazed pedophile who, is, believe me, isn't going to change. Pedophiles don't change. His, his taste for little boys is going to continue to be the same. It's only going to be the modus operandi that's going to be different. And, of course, the television people, all these 80 million, this cast of 80 million lunatics hyperventilating last night and this morning, uh, they, didn't, they, they conveniently overlooked many, many things, like the testimony that wasn't really made very, very public because it was a little, a little bit too a grotesque and a little bit too blue for what's going on in America these days, yeah. about the Vaseline, how he had one of the employees, he was in the sauna with this kid that, was, uh, that brought the charges, and uh, he calls him to bring the jar, go up to the house and get the big jar of Vaseline, the giant economy size, and bring it down. And he brings the jar of Vaseline there, and Michael comes out in his pajamas in a, an obviously aroused state. See, this is a 46-year-old man who doesn't date women, who had two sham marriages, which and anybody with a brain knows that, who didn't father any kids and never will. Now, you tell me that a uh, 46-year-old man is asexual or he just has no... This is bull crap. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the most the beautiful neuter. thing you can do is share your bed with little boys. Yeah, right. It's beautiful. Right. Cookies and milk and porno and Jesus juice. What's not to like? Right. Sounds like a party to me. We asked yesterday, before we get into this crap, who best fits this description? Somebody Neil trashes I like a lot. You know who I left off of there? Kirstie Alley. Do you think she got any votes? No. No. That's why I left Nobody her off. Nobody her, yeah. I saw her on a spot. No, I didn't see a spot. I was channel surfing last night. I saw, like, five seconds of that show, Fat Pig. Oh, what is that called? Yeah, Fat Pig. <laughs> fat actress. <laughs> fat Pig in a bathtub. Oh, my God. Just slop that hog, man. Slop it. Slop it and then slap it a little bit. Anyway, Bill Maher, 242. They just love Bill Maher. Well, you go ahead. I can't stand him. He's a little twerpy guy. It makes me nauseous. He's just uh, a silly person. Anna Kornikova, 194. George W., 129. 7.4% of this audience still doesn't get it. You're still not onto it. Steely Dan, 122. Believe you me, they're well. They're not only out of gas, they're out of steam. Randy Rhodes, 117. Howard! Pink Floyd, 103. They sure steam me. Phil Henry, 91. Are you sure... Jerry Seinfeld, 75. Geldy, 72. He'll be on Friday. We can have a little uh, verbal intercourse with Geldy. 72 for the uh, little squeaker. Jimmy Buffett, 60. And Mo Howard David at 60. Do, 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 do. Maybe, you know something? And what's that uh, song Jimmy Buffett sings? Cheeburger and what? Paradise. Paradise. So that's why they're right there, side by each. Jimmy Buffett and the Mo Man, 60 apiece. Tom Hanks, 52. Al Franken, 50. Mel Gibson, 43. Defoe, 39. Defoe and the Corn Man. The Pope, 35. Paul and Ron, 34. Ira Windbag, 23. Rick Riley, 23. Speaking of Windbag. Spencer Tracy, 22. Will Smith, 18. Joe Zagacki, 18. And, of course, we know... Joe Zagacki sucks, okay? James Taylor, 17. He's seen fire and he's seen rain, and I hope I never hear his songs again. Whoopi Goldberg, 14. Bel Shpilke's in Ray, 12. Bill O'Reilly, 12. Dave Van Boring, 11. The Big... Oh! Who's... Rock solid. 10. Rush Limbaugh, 10. Miss Drudge has got 6. You fairy. You fairy. You fairy. Rick Sanchez, 5. Dick Clark, 3. And Rich Waltz, way down there in the bottom, 2. So they're on to him, too, believe me. In spite of the fact that uh, Fat Jim's, Jim Sarney don't want to write about it, they're on to Rich Waltz, and they realize that what I've said about him is true. He couldn't announce his way out of a paper bag. Marlins kicked some ass in Chicago, I see, last night, Josh. That's good. That's right. It's uh, a little overdue. 
10-13 at QAM. Holy Mackinac! This is Joe Bow and the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you're listening to the Hockey Authority, Neil Guy. <laughs> uh, we pause and give thanks and praise to God and say a prayer that Michael Jackson will have the ability and strength to moonwalk his way to justice. It is my hope that Michael not suffer the complication of condemnation, the aggravation of accusation, the inspiration without the intimidation. Let us instead implement rationalization, not segregation, for reconciliation and reexamination and reevaluation. A reconsideration for revitalization, a classification of presentation and correlation and misappropriation demoralization for Michael. I will answer your questions now. Yes. I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> oh, yeah. They dragged him out there again, man. He was on how many times last night and this morning? About 30, man. Oh, brother. The media is sick and needs help badly. And he's sitting there giving like a uh, lecture on morality. How do you like that? All right. Mr. Uh, Father of the Year all over the country. Just uh, amazing to me. I'm, I want to play that the whole show today. The media is sick and needs help badly. In fact, I'm thinking maybe the whole rest of the week. The media is sick and needs help badly. You listen to the American media, man. You, uh, your brain, no wonder uh, the public has just turned to jello. Here's the poll we sneaked in there. 276 votes in about an hour this morning. Not too shabby, hour and a half, whatever the hell it was. Why did Michael Jackson get acquitted? Here's what you be saying. The accuser's family had no credibility. No Schmidt. 121. California can't convict celebrities. Also correct. 73. I don't give a Sith, 43. Well, good for you. Uh, and let me just, before I read the rest of the poll, Brian Williams on the NBC Nightly, Nightly News last night, at the end of the uh, newscast, came out with a little commentary, which I thought was refreshing. And he went through this thing about, uh, since this uh, Jackson trial started, we had the, uh, the tsunami in Asia. We've had a uh, total of, I forget how many more, 1,300 more American troops die in Iraq and Afghanistan since the trial started. And he went through this whole list of uh, incredibly important things that are going on. He said, and he apologized. Uh, for their, uh, what he called, excessive coverage of the thing. And thank goodness it's over and we can get back to real news. Nice going, Brian. So even though he has got that bizarre face, I'm still going to continue watching NBC Nightly News by default. I'm sure I'm watching that old man Bob Sheefish on the uh, CBS. And, of course, ABC don't have a guy because Peter Jennings is busy dying. So that's it. Prosecution case was very weak, 20. Uh, the jury was starstruck, 13. Now, that also was a correct answer, at least with a couple of them. Now, that, that, oh, that uh, trailer trash uh, bitch, wow. And he was innocent, only only six. <laughs> oh, only 2% say he was innocent. How do you like that? So we know he's a pedophile. We know he's a child molester. We know he plies these. Uh, we know he'd be plying the kids with Jesus juice. And then uh, he's plying them there with their, his pliers. But, uh, you know, this was the wrong case at the wrong time. Isn't that something? That's something. Isn't that what they were saying during the election? Wasn't that the line that kept saying this oh, is the wrong yeah. war at the wrong time and Keep the wrong that. candidate? That was the Democratic problem. It was the wrong candidate at the wrong time. Oh, just say, wait till uh, next time, though. They specialize in that. Oh, I'm waiting with oh, bated breath. Yeah. I'll make sure I'm out of the country then. Oh, that's right. A bomb exploded today outside a bank of the northern city of Kirkuk in Iraq. Things are going swimmingly well over there. Oh, we're fine. Only 19 more people, including pensioners waiting for checks and child street vendors. Well, it's a good thing uh, Hyman Roth wasn't there. Isn't that what he was a pensioner just living on a whatever it was? Just a retiree living right. in Right. In Baghdad, the bodies of 24 men slain in ambushes were brought to a hospital. Well, to why would they bring them to a hospital? I mean, they're all dead. Well, that's where they go anyway. They have a basement. Oh. A suicide car bomber also rammed his vehicle into an Iraqi army che uh, checkpoint, killing five soldiers there and wounding two others in a uh, town about 30 miles about 30, man. north of Baghdad. Two civilians were also wounded there. And it just goes on and on. It's not a day that goes by that we don't have this murder and bloodshed and mayhem and una bamba grande over here and una bamba pequeña over there. And it just goes on. But let's get to the important story. Okay, I'll wait a minute. First, here's the poll today. Sure, we'll get some calls on this, and we'll get them in there. Uh, see, I could have just taken TV Guide and taken all the shows that are on right now. <laughs> that, right, would have been, that would have taken all your fun away. You get the online listing. What one TV show today? I mean, obviously, maybe there could be more than one, but which one more than any? What one TV show today do you never miss? 60 Minutes 14. Well, that's our intellectual crowd out there. Good. Never miss. I, I do miss it occasionally. Uh, the Shield 10. That was George's choice. The Shield. Yes. 70 Show 7. Uh, in fact, oh, look at that. Just changed all around. 60 Minutes 15, The Shield 11, Jeopardy 8. Oh, I hate that show. Blah. That 70 show 7. Hate that show. Blah. Guiding Light 4. That was my choice. It's gotten really good again. Judge Judy 3. Smallville 3. Price is Right 1. NBC Dateline 1. Squeal of Fortune 1. I never missed that either. Uh, Passions 1. Also never missed that. And Deadwood None. Who put Deadwood on there? It just came in on the facts. That's our first 50, 55 votes. Oh. Let's see. What's this fax? Oh, look, here's a fax from some expert out there. 
Here's my take on the Jackson fiasco. The verdict, we weren't there for the evidence, so how can any of us know if the prosecution proved its case or not? Well, obviously they did not. Since the standard is beyond a reasonable doubt, it's likely that the defense introduced enough evidence to establish that. Well, no, why don't you get it, Pally? The mother was on trial. In fact, there's a thing in the Sun Sentinel, if you look on their website, they have a brand new article about that was the strategy from the beginning, was to go after her and make her the issue as opposed to the uh, facts. Right. It says here, either that or just as with O.J. and Robert Blake, Southern California prosecutors can't win high-profile celebrity criminal cases. Maybe they care more about their limelight than having an airtight case. I will say this, too. It says those morons standing outside, high-fiving, throwing confetti, letting white doves go free, etc. These people are pathetic. Absolutely correct, sir. They get in bed at the Neverland Ranch in a heartbeat. The only problem with that, sir, is that they're all too old. Yeah, <laughs> they're too ugly. old for him. The good and part, since he won, there will be no appeal. This means no more newsworthy story. This means that there will be no diversion with this story from what's really going on. Oh, there will be another one. Oh, yeah, they'll find something. They're already working on that Aruba thing where they let those two uh, security guards go. And they're PO'd. Mm -hmm. More U.S. dead in Iraq. Downing Street memos. Lies about global warming. Lies about social security. A pack of lies. It says maybe the last 24-hour 24, 24 news shows will show other news for a while as the feeding frenzy simmers down, at least until the next who-cares-celebrity nonsense occurs. There you go. Well, you got a point, or two or three. Five six seven oh five sixty. We got some TV shows on that poll. Then we got, of course, the whole the whole story here, the big story. But those jurors, I you know, I'll yeah. say it again: the American jury system is a, a, an abject failure. And you don't even have to listen to those people. Listen to the nonsense they were talking. Just look at them. Mm -hmm. And that juror number one, they've had him on how many times now? About thirty, man. And King last night, and then again this morning. He keeps repeating the same thing. Oh yeah, we knew. Uh, pretty sure he molested uh, little boys, but uh, they didn't prove it in this case. Well, we feel a lot better about that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. Justice. Hallelujah. WQAM. Hello. Tom Gustafson. <laughs> oh, Berkeley is cold calling him right now. As a matter of fact, thank you. Come to QAM. Hello. QAM. Not there. These are our, the, they're just so overwhelmed. They're, in fact, probably most of our audience, they would like to be out there at uh, Neverland Ranch. Neverland, sucking on some QAM, hello. In that small crowd of misfits. Yeah, yes. this is for the uh, poll. Yeah. 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 I would like to vote, please, if I could. 24, the best show on TV right now. What does this man say? And also, I have a word for deal on Nancy Grace. Yeah. She is rabid. This Rabbit. woman is insane, and I found she out rapid, rapidly uh, driving me crazy. Okay, that, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand this guy. Sounds like he's got a—he's gargling through a big shoe. What did he say? What's yelling and distorted? Nancy what? Grace is rabid, and the I show heard that. is twenty-four. Oh, twenty-four. Excuse me. I never seen that show. Am I missing something good? Everybody, I have never seen it either. I want to see it from the beginning. Everyone says it's great. Really? Yeah. Well, there you go. Twenty-four. Let's get that on there right away. I bet you I know how many votes it's going to get. You think twenty-four? About thirty, man. At least. Also from the facts. From yeah. Dave, Daily Show and South Park. The Daily Show and South Park. Two excellent choices. I don't watch either one of them, but two very good choices. Michael Jackson has asked the judge in his trial for permission to speak out about his alleged mistreatment at the hands of the Santa Barbara Police Department. Uh, oh, it was awful. They plucked me from my warm, cozy California King bed while I was watching reruns of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> They stormed my mansion like I was Saddam Hussein. <laughs> they were calling me horrible names like, Hey, you, and stop running, and sit right there. Uh, I tried to defend myself by saying, I am rubber and you are glue, and whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you, but it did not stop them. Ooh. They spilled my milk all over my furry white bunny slippers and smashed my bubble-making machine to smithereens. Ah. <laughs> I tried to keep them out of my secret room by throwing pixie stick dust in their eyes. <laughs> but they kept coming. It was a nightmare. Why are the police allowed to treat people this way? I am an upstanding citizen who wants only to have his privacy and an occasional sleepover theme party. Uh, who to say my guest didn't want to play the popular party game, What's in My Pocket? Um, that is my business and the business of the family's defense attorney, not the police. Uh -uh. I have bruises on my new nose and red marks on my buttocks, though that's not from the police. Um, 
Satan, they shackled my wrist and shoved the bashi ball into my mouth and said, who's bad? Actually, maybe that was a dream I had last night. <laughs> Never mind. So please, please, people, you need not be ruffians or say nasty things to me. Sticks and stones may break my elephant man bones, but names, they also hurt me. How? <laughs> It's uh, 1033. He innocent, man. He didn't do nothing. A jury acquitted Michael Jackson yesterday of molesting a 13-year-old cancer survivor at his Neverland Ranch, exonerating the pop star who insisted he was the victim of mother and son con artists and the prosecutor with a vendetta. Jurors also acquitted Jackson of getting the boy drunk and conspiring to imprison his accuser and the boy's family at the storybook estate. I think he just wanted the Vaseline because the door to the sauna was like uh, the hinges were a little rusty. Isn't that what it was? That's what it was. A, a total legal victory, but one that may do little to improve his bizarre image, it says here. This is in the Boston Globe. Jackson had faced nearly 20 years in prison, I think 18. The courtroom was deathly still as the verdicts were read. In fact, I got it uh, here somewhere, uh, somewhere, somehow. Verdicts, and as I look through uh, the verdict form, there are, you know, there are uh, more than actually 10 pages, because if you do believe, if they do believe that Michael Jackson is guilty, there are follow-up pages to examine uh, as well. Yeah, examine this. So at any rate, uh, the courtroom was deathly still as the verdicts were read. Jackson is motionless as he had been throughout the trial, obviously heavily medicated. Uh, they actually said that on court TV. I was delighted to hear that. I, I will say this for them, even though I can't stand Nancy Grace. They don't pull any punches on here. You know, in other words, if they think somebody's guilty, they rip him an ass. Nice going. And they yeah. convict him right there on the air, which many people were complaining about. One of his lawyers burst into tears as the first verdict were announced, and Jackson later stood and was embraced by his chief lawyer, Tom, what a mess my hair is, uh, Jr. Some of the women in the jury also wept and passed around a box of tissues. As he left court, Jackson, looking drawn, held his hand to his heart and blew kisses to the screaming crowd. He was escorted by his aides into a black SUV and made no immediate public statement. Jackson later arrived at Neverland, where he was greeted by more fans, a throng of at least two, three dozen fans. I would never have married a pedophile, and the system works, Jackson's ex-wife, Debbie Rowe, said in a statement given to Entertainment Tonight. We don't believe you, Mitch. I wonder how much they paid her off, huh? Screams of joy rang out among a throng of fans outside the courthouse, at least uh, 75 to 100. Fans jumped up and down, hugged each other, and threw confetti in a celebration of the news. A woman in the crowd released one white dove as each acquittal was announced. Santa Barbara County DA Tom Stedden sat with his head in his hands. Obviously, we're disappointed in the verdict, but we believe in the system of justice, Then told reporters. Now, here, this is the best part. I don't want to... Oh, and look who's on, on CNN right now. Take a look. ...his office. I'm going after my Kendall, Jackson. give me a cup of coffee. And will, will you get him off the screen already? There's Rush Limbaugh's wife and Kendall Coffee. A match made in hell. What did I tell you? I want to play it the whole day, the whole week, the rest of my life. The media is sick and needs help badly. The same talking heads nonstop. Pop, 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 pee, pee. Go defend some clients, Kendall. Go get some work, some real work. Get off my screen. But anyway, so this is the most... Talk about a bunch of hypocrites, the jury. Mm-hmm. Did you hear the statement that they uh, issued, right after, issued right after the verdict was read? No, I avoided it. After the verdict was announced, the judge read a statement from the jury. Here's the statement. We, the jury, feel the weight of the world's eyes upon us. They ask to be allowed to return to our private lives as anonymously as we came. And so all the experts, the 80,000 pundits on there, the talking heads were uh, anticipating and uh, expectorating that uh, they were going to hop in their automobiles and go back home and never be seen again. And lo and behold, about an hour later, we see a room with a bunch of chairs in it. Mm -hmm. 20 chairs in there for the 12 jurors and the alternates. And a few minutes later, here come them 20 people being ushered in there. And the same people that wanted to go back to their lives anonymously, they're getting their three and a half seconds of fame on TV. Now, I will grant you, they didn't give any names out, but it was like juror number one, number seven, number two, number whatever it was. Right? Right. You saw that? Nope. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, listen, it was even on the Food Channel, for Christ's sakes. I'm thinking to myself, what, what is this? Are these the people who wanted to be anonymous? Now they're kind of, every event that takes place in America, if you have a good bowel movement, there has to be a post-BM press conference. And you've got to sit in front of a bunch of microphones, you know. I mean, I'm getting choked up about it. Well, don't cry. Uh, well, no, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. That's the way Every the world single works. thing that goes on, we've got to have a press conference. Let's see. Chris says, please add the OC to your poll. Let's get the OC on there right away. And what about uh, uh, all those other ones, like CSI Miami, CSI uh, Canada, uh, CSI Ips, uh, Ypsilanti? I put CSI. Well, good. There you go. That should cover it. It says, I don't know if you're in a pool, but for a future pool, favorite way to plunge your guts out. This will show how far out of the mainstream that Josh is on slots, Chris says. How do you like that, Josh? Nah, 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 nah. Chris is ripping you an ass. Yeah, because everybody just wins <coughs> when they play slots. Everybody what? 
Everybody just wins a lot when they play slots. That's not the point. Most people who gamble lose. Anybody will admit that if they're honest. Right. Most compulsive gamblers lie through their teeth, just like most fat people lie. Oh, I didn't eat nothing yesterday. Just a couple of quarts of what? By the way, no ice cream. How many days in a row is that now? Seven, eight, nine, nine. Good. Today is ten days. Ever. No, wait a minute. Nine. Eight, nine. No, today is eleven. Whatever. We don't have to count the days because I'm not eating that stuff. And my blood sugar this morning was 102. Very nice number. Nice go, Neil. Thank you. Right. That was it. Anyway, here's that Sun Sentinel thing. Just a little piece of it that I was talking about to give you an idea. Eight months ago, defense attorney Thomas My Harris and Messero Jr. made a strategic move that may have provided the key to Michael Jackson's court victory. He hired a new private investigator and told him to focus relentlessly on the accuser's mother. How do you like that? Uh-huh. Scott Ross had worked on the Robert Blake defense, digging up unsavory items about the actor's trailer trash murdered wife. The information allowed defense lawyers to argue that someone other than Blake, who was charged with killing her, had a motive. Moreover, the details gave uh, jurors a reason to dislike the dead woman. See, there you go. Mesero wanted a repeat performance, and he gave his investigator a simple, blunt instruction Ross recalled yesterday. I want you to do to the mother of the alleged victim what you did to Bonnie Lee Bakley. There you go. That's all you need to know. Just trailer trash her ass. And they did a great job of it. Mm -hmm. And, of course, she didn't have to make anything up because she, uh, she fit the role perfectly. Sure. And evidently, her on, uh, on the witness stand uh, comportment, compartment uh, was uh, just exactly what they wanted. She acted like a real neurotic, crazy-ass bitch. Got a lot more on that. Well, not too much. We don't want to get overboard because we got that cargo plane that crashed. We got, all, we got the American Airlines flight that was diverted to Illinois because somebody found a radio in the bathroom. What station was it in? And they found they might have been listening to some subversive show like... Oh, God! Frank says, the problem with the Michael Jackson trial, as well as with all celebrity trials, there's always reasonable doubt whenever the accused has tons of money. It's always reasonable to be suspicious of the accuser's motives when they stand to gain monetarily. Therefore, when the defense says the accusations are fabricated for the sole purpose of money, it's hard to refute that without actual video of the crime being committed. Or without that jar of Vaseline, anyway. I'm telling you, we're just greasing up the uh, door. Battle yeah. Starve Galaxative. <laughs> that's, that's cute. I like that. We put it on it. That is excellent. Yeah, you need a good laxative after you watch that. Although, let's bring Rick, Rick Springfield back for the movie. What do you say? All right, for you. 1042, 18 before 11 at QAM. If you're in the market for a new car or truck, then stop by Armstrong Ford of Homestead this week because Ford has offered new discounts and prices are well below the market price. Right now at Armstrong Ford, there's financing as low as 0% or rebates up to six grand, or you can drive away in a brand new Ford and make no payments for six months. The bottom line is this. When you add the Armstrong Ford discount and the bonus cash incentive from Ford, there is no better time than right this moment for you to buy a new Ford and save like crazy. Pick up the phone right now. Call David Rich, the GM, at 305-247-5112. Ask David for the Neal deal. I know it sounds a little bizarre, but this is a bizarre show after all. And they have a deal for you on a brand new Ford just because you listen to this bizarre show. When you buy from Armstrong Ford or Homestead, you'll get their exclusive tires and batteries for life program, too. You won't get a better deal on a Ford anywhere. I'll bet you fat boy's life on it. No bait and switch, no phony deals. Armstrong Ford or Homestead, 30725 South Dixie Highway, 20 easy minutes south of the 836. So give David Rich a call, 305-247-5112, and ask for the Neal deal, or check them on the web at armstrongcars.com. Whatever you do, be sure and stop down this week and save thousands on that great new Ford only at Armstrong Ford of Homestead. When it comes to entertainment, it's Neil Rogers, Neil Rogers, and Ford Radio 560, QAM. Oh my God, your breasts are beautiful. Boys telling tales of a diddling jackal in a secret bedroom with this big wacko. Can't give you details because they're too sick. Michael Jackson's a total lunatic. His favorite show used to be Wonderama. He used to watch with his chimp and his llama. Like Peter Pan, he refuses to grow. I put the blame on his free father, Joe. Walking around Neverland in his PJs. Putting the children in the Jesus Tuesdays. He's paid families who've accused him before. He shouldn't have sleepovers anymore. Milk and cookies, furry walkies, playing pin the tail. Can anything stop the deranged king of pop except 20 years? 
Six fourteen before eleven o'clock. Our schedule looks like this. We got the mole man at two. <laughs> Mad dog four to seven. Another three hour show. Boy, he must be really PO'd that they're playing those night games in Chicago. Uh, Curtis seven to seven thirty. Marlins on deck at seven thirty. The Marlins at the Cubs eight oh five at Wrigley Field. Eddie K after the ball game. I guess uh, they don't play nearly as many day games as they used to at Wrigley Field, huh? Because okay. even when they started playing night games, there were just a few here and there. But they must be playing a lot more of them. Or they maybe still, just they when, still play quite a few digging. Maybe just when the Marlins are there, just yeah. to piss all of us off. Right. Anyway, Howard listening on the Internet from Jersey. And by the way, no dropouts on the Internet. Oh. All right, we're streaming it, baby. He says, please add this to the list. I'm sure this will be the eventual winner of your poll also. Thanks for putting And that is that there are no can't miss uh, shows currently on TV. I don't know how you want to word that, but uh, stick that on there, please. Stick it. Yeah, none of them. Also, he says, thanks for posting that color-coded schedule on your website. He's talking about where, what day you're on and what day mm-hmm. I'm on starting uh, next week. Uh, well, really not starting next week, starting the week after. Right. He says, um, thanks for posting the color-coded schedule on your website. Got to avoid those messy accidents when it's so hot and sticky out. I don't know what he means by that. What does that mean? Well, the uh, the caption above the schedule says so that you can avoid those messy radio accidents. Oh, I see. But the caption below it is the one I wanted to get to because Eric can't, he just can't separate his uh, his uh, goody two-shoe doers because he's got cheesehead Tommy Thompson, just like he did last year, confused with Tom Ridge. Oh. The former head of Homeland Security, the one who invented the color code. Tommy Thompson was the one who said, oh, he drank water from a creek. He was an outdoor guy. <laughs> and how come they haven't poisoned our food yet? That was uh, Tommy Thompson, the old cheesehead. Because it says, um, thanks again to Tommy Thompson for the color coding idea. Not Tommy Thompson, Eric. Sorry, it was Tommy Ridge. Okay? Get your Tommy straight. Not that we want to pick on Eric, but it's fun. In fact, I think let's let's take a different tack on it. Starting on the 23rd, let's just put a whole bunch of uh, really pornographic stuff on there just to make sure Eric goes to jail. How's that? <laughs> well, we got to put somebody in there. We can't convict any celebrities. Right. Now, somebody facts TV's dumbest, meanest, and vainest anchors an exclusive industry pool. Paula Zahn, I'm glad to see that. She is such a simple man. Yeah. You should have seen her exchange with Jesse Jackson last night. That was just pathetic, just tragic. She's a bubblehead. But anyway, the one that they got marked here, which I'm sure everybody in South Florida will love, Rick Sanchez. And the print, uh, if I can read this, man, my eyesight must be a 2090. It must be 8080. Get those uh, micronary magnavisions out. No, I, I think I can get most of it. Rick Sanchez, anchor CNN Live today. And this is a list of TV's dumbest, meanest, and vainest anchors and exclusive inside industry pool. His first grade teacher outed him as a retard, and so do his co workers. He should have stayed on local Miami TV, said one CNN producer, although he wasn't even good enough for that. On-air mishaps, while interviewing an MD who said he paid $800 for insurance in 1980 and pays 200 times that now, Sanchez exclaimed, Good God, that's $500,000. In March, he proved that electricity hurts by delivering 500,000 volts through his, 50,000 volts through his body in a, uh, via a shock bell, ball, bell, I can't read that. Uh, activated by prison guards who laughed as he cried. Do it. Stop. Oh, that hurts. He can, he's completely dumb, says a colleague. Dreadful. And, of course, they are. Absolutely correct, sir. We, those of us in South Florida know Ricky Tiki Sanchez, we know completely dumb, is an understatement of the century. And, like I said, it didn't take very long before CNN really, be- they got him off that morning show, they got him off prime time, and they bury him either late at night or, like, in the wee hours of the morning when everybody, thank goodness, is geschluffen. Now... No. Here's the New York Daily Beast. We'll get a lot more shows on there, but I want to get uh, all the Michael Jackson crap out of the way. Geez, a whole hour on this garbage? Sure, why not? Kill some good time. Absolutely. The Michael Jackson jury said the prosecution's molestation case was tainted by the mother of the pop star's accuser, whom they found annoying and likely a scam artist. You see that thing about Bonnie Lee? This is the new thing. It's just like in the O.J. trial when they went after Mark Furman. Mm-hmm. See, he became the issue. Not O.J., but Mark Furman. It was hard to give the mom the benefit of the doubt when the defense blasted her as a liar and thief, Jurors said, and her behavior on the stand did little to win their sympathies. I disliked it intently when she snapped her fingers at us at juror number five, a 79-year-old great-grandmother. That's the one that's writing a book. Mm-hmm. And believe you me, there'll be other ones yeah, writing a book. The only one. That's when I thought, don't snap your fingers at me, lady, bitch. The judge ordered that the jurors' names be sealed, and except for a few, most has to be identified only by number. Juror number one, who identified himself as Raymond Haltman, 62, a civil engineer who's been all over the TV like stink on Greg, said he was initially leaning toward conviction but changed his mind during the deliberations. He's the one that said, I feel that Michael Jackson has probably molested boys, he said on CNN. He said that how many times just this morning? About 30, man. To be in your bedroom for 365 straight days and not do something more than just watch television and eat popcorn, that doesn't make sense to me. But that doesn't make him guilty of the charges that were presented. 
Most jurors believe the accuser's mother took advantage of previous sex abuse allegations against Jackson and put her son up to lying. Juror number 10, an unemployed mother, said the accuser's mom left her stunned at times. What mother in her right mind would allow that to happen, she said. Just freely volunteer your child to sleep with someone, not so much just Michael Jackson, but any person for that matter. That's something that mothers are naturally concerned with. Oh, I will say this for that mother. At least she didn't let him sleep. But once he found out about the Jesus juice, she yanked the whole family out of there and they hightailed it. As opposed to the uh, mother that let the kids sleep there 365 straight nights. Juror number eight, a 42-year-old special education aide, said she actually felt sorry for the accuser of a cancer survivor who claimed Jackson molested him in 2003. She said it was obvious the boy's mother did not instill good values in her children. Thank God that Joe Jackson did it in his. That's right. As a mother, the values and stuff she's taught them and they have learned is very hard to comprehend, she said. I wouldn't want any of my children to lie for their own gain. She also said the long trial made Jackson, who came to court in makeup and outlandish clothing, seem more normal. Oh, sure, normal guys come to uh, the trials in their uh, pajamas all the time. I mean, just that alone, right there on that day, somebody should have blown a whistle, you know, whoop, and made a sound. <laughs> okay, hold it. Hold it. Something's not right over here. Something's not kosher in Denmark. Even though he's a superstar, he's human, said juror number eight. What? This, oh. Watching him during this trial, to me, he's just a normal person that made him real. Okay. Yeah. Juror number three, a 50-year-old horse trader, said all the defense evidence that showed the mother to be welfare cheat and scam artist stayed in her mind. You couldn't help but wonder, she said. Things just didn't add up. Just like at Pesach, the bread is wonder. Juror number four, a 51-year-old ex-high school math teacher, said she didn't like the way the accuser's mother looked at the jury. I was very uncomfortable with that, the woman said. She didn't take her eyes off us, so that was a very uncomfortable feeling. Jury foreman Paul Rodriguez, kin to George, 63, a retired high school counselor, said he was put off when the mom, who's also Hispanic, singled him out. <clears throat> the mother, when she looked at me and snapped her fingers three times and says, you know how our culture is and winks at me. No, that's not the way our culture is. Oh, it's not? No, it's not. It's oh. culture. I thought your culture was kind of gay. The family, well, that doesn't mean pedophiles, but nevertheless, that's the general stereotype. That's the ugly part of this whole thing, see? That's the nasty part. You fairy! Anyway, the family's different stories also didn't help. They didn't have the same story, Rodriguez said, ad uh, adding that it appeared the boy was taught to lie. The jurors, in other words, it was... A pack of lies. The jurors insisted they closely examine all the evidence during the 32 hours they deliberated over six days. About 30, man! You're hoping that you can find a smoking gun. In this case, we had difficulty finding that, Holtman said. Several jurors insisted Jackson's celebrity status did not play in their deliberations. We decided to look at him, and just like any other individual, not as a celebrity, Rodriguez said. <laughs> Only the right. nose got in the way, I'm sure. He also said the stash of pornography found in Jackson's home and allegations that he slept with young boys was troubling, <coughs> but not solid evidence that it added up to molestation. Those are adult magazines, and anyone can own them, the foreman said. It doesn't prove the charge. He also had a tip for the pop star. We would hope he doesn't sleep with children anymore. Well, guess what? Yeah. Hope all you want. That ain't going to happen. Maybe I mean, I, I was kind of shocked one time. Uh, they asked him point blank, are the sleepovers all over Mesereau this morning? The attorney, and he said, well, uh, uh, certainly it's going to be a more, uh, be more a different terrible. game plan, I think is what yeah. he's saying. A gay plan? Yeah. Maybe they can uh, ship up some of those uh, homeless kids from uh, Latin America, you know? Those anonymous that nobody knows their name. Yeah, and they have days. Yeah. I don't think I have time for the cargo plane thing. Let's get a few more shows on the pool. How are we doing so far? 60 Minutes 32, the one TV show you never miss, The Shield 19, Deadwood 18. Well, that's moving up there fast. Judge Judy. Is that the, Judge Judy Dean? 12. That would not be something. Je Jeopardy 12. Uh, nothing 11. And Well, nothing. Uh, that's not. We don't want to put it that way. Well, whatever. Nothing? None. None. Huh? None. Of none. It. Not nothing. Okay. The, the, well, nothing sounds like that. It could be the name of a show. <laughs> the name of a show. Nothing. The Daily Show 11. The Was Saturday Show 11. Uh, Sh uh, Dave Chappelle Show 8. Is that back on yet, Josh? Don't answer. Not yet. No. He's still working it out. South Park 7, 24 7, Smallville 7, Guiding Light uh, 5. Hey, Alan. Uh, let's see. Wheel of Fortune 4, NBC Dateline 3, CSI 2, The OC 2. Price is Right 2, Passions 2, and Battlestar Galactica, Solamente Uno. Oh, wait a minute. i got a spot to do. Yeah, I did. It's fake out, didn't I? Well, that's, that's like, okay. Keep you on your toes. Right. Keep you right on the edge of your seat. Yeah, how about The Edge of Night? Anybody remember that show, that soap opera, The Edge of Night? No. How about no. The Secret Storm? Remember that? Yes. Sure you do. 1056 at 560 WQM. I'm sure you're familiar with now, by now with Berkeley and our friend Anthony Caliendo, the main man at Acceptance Capital Mortgage. So before you call any other mortgage company, let the main man tell you what you didn't know, and that is that Berkeley is a raving lunatic and that most banks only work with three different mortgage products. Solamente Trace, as in Trace That Call. 
And if your credit is less than 100% perfect, you're ready to hear the most famous, the most unctuous, the most obnoxious, the most detestable two-letter word in the language, N-O. No. That's the word. If you're not working with the right lender, chances of getting approved are only 50-50. So improve your odds. Get yourself the deal you're really hoping for. Do yourself a favor and call Anthony Caliendo right now, toll-free, at one 888 loan And let the main man and his team put you in a mortgage that you're looking for that meets your needs. Avoid going to the wrong lender. Maybe being turned down because you called the wrong number. Call the main man at Acceptance Capital Mortgage, toll-free, 1-888-4A3-LOAN. That's 1-888-4A3-LOAN. And don't forget, every time they close a loan, a portion is donated to kids in distress, so everybody wins all the way around. Why call anybody else? Avoid the old bait-and-switch. Get precisely the mortgage deal you're looking for by calling Anthony Caliendo, everybody's main man, today, 1-888-4A3-LOAN. <laughs> When it comes to sports, we're the authority. Sports Radio 560 QAM. This is the Neil Rogers Show. This is your brain. Any questions? Michael's father, Joe Jackson, says if his son is found guilty, he'll take over as the custodial parent of Paris, Prince Michael, and Prince Michael II. Here now is Joe Jackson. Hi, this is Joe Jackson. You know, I was once voted the world's greatest dad, and I got the coffee cup to prove it, although I had to crazy glue it back together after I cracked it over Tito's head. <laughs> I've become a better papa and a husband, too. I explored with them Dr. Phil books, Family First, Step-by-Step -step Plan for Creating a Phenomenal Family, and, of course, Self Matters, which is creating your life from the inside out, which I found a little bit perversive. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Here come Paris. What up, Paris? Grandpa's talking on the radio, Paris. I'm telling people how to be a great parent. Get the hell away from me, can't you see Grandpa's talking? Don't cry. What's Grandpa say about crying? What's Grandpa say about crying? Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Interrupt Grandpa. <clears throat> now, I am a wonderful model and custodial figure. Look at what a great job I did with my kids. I'm sure that I'll raise my grandkids up just as well. Oh, here come Prince Junior now. Can't you see Grandpa's talking on the radio? Can I get a cookie? I'm going to give you a cookie right outside your nappy little head. Now get back away from me. What's Grandpa say about crying? What, what's Grandpa say about crying? Don't cry. Don't cry no more. Anyway, as I was saying, you've got to be loving, supportive, and creates an environment where kids can thrive. 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 Hi, Here come the other Prince Michael. Now it's another Prince Michael. Grandpa, can I have a hug? Grandpa, don't hug. What's Grandpa say about boys who hug? Boys who hug grow up to be like Daddy. Get the hell away from me. Can I have a hug? Make me sick. You make me... Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch... What's Grandpa say about boys who touch? They grow up like Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. One thing I've learned from my successful years of parenting, my six, seven, eight, nine kids, is I don't know how many I have. However, I do love every one of them equally, especially Michael, who has helped close and feed the family for the past 30 years. If he didn't do that, I probably wouldn't give him the time of day like I don't for Jermaine. Most important rule, be loving, listen, and be patient with the little idiots. This is Joe Jackson. Have a good day. Get Grandpa a beer! <laughs> yeah, it's 1104 at 560. A lot of that tittering going on these days, you know. Grumpy says, please add HBO's The Wire to your pool. You got The Wire? We got it. Are we wired? We're wired. Here's one that says, I never missed the McLaughlin Group. Bye-bye. Boys and I might booty. have to play that. Yeah. I might just have to play that for... Uh, Hey. Old, uh, what's his name? Jackie, Jackie, Fat Your Mom. It's one we can play, so. Yeah, it's one of the uh, eight that we can still play. And also for, um, G. I. Eleanor, G. I think you're swelling her. Let's see, what's this one say? It says, unbelievable, you rightly slammed the MSM nitwits and horse for beating the dead horse. Demise. And here you are. Well, I, oh, yeah, right. Give me a break. Give us a break. We can tune to a, fo a fox foe for this crap. Yeah, right. Give me a break, you idiots. That's all anybody's talking about right now. We're whores like everybody else. The difference being that we admit it. What the hell's wrong with you? In fact, just just uh, to rub it in a little more, here's some more. I was done with this stuff, but here's some more. All right. Basking in the jurors' decision. And, and see, this is in conflict with what I heard Tom, my hair is a messero uh, on uh, CNN. 
but evidently on today he was uh, talking out of the other side of his ass. Basking in the jury's decision to acquit his client of all counts, Michael Jackson's lawyer said Tuesday, the singer will no longer share his bed with young boys. Right. He's not going to do that anymore, Attorney Tom. No, they'll do it on the floor. And Tom the, Mesereau told NBC's house. today. He's not going to make himself vulnerable to this anymore. Mesereau said the singer was still recovering from the ordeal. He's going to take it one day at a time. It's been a terrible, terrible process for him, he said, on today. Yeah, on today, today. And you see that fax? You see what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. barely after 11 o'clock. We got through the first hour with any meh, but here we go. Meh. Why are you talking about this? Because that's all anybody cares about. Every single day I come on a show, and the first thing we talk about is how many more dead troops we got and how many more dead Iraqi innocent people are killed, and nobody gives a flying crap about it. Like I invented this, okay? Oh, and look who they got on right now, Tito. Not Marshall Tito, Tito Jackson. Now, pro the jurors... Bada -beep, bada -boop, bada -boop, yeah, whatever you say, get out of my face. Like the guy said, and he had a good point. Uh, quit with the overkill. Enough with the garbage already. What one TV show now, on now, do you never miss? 60 minutes, 30 foe. None. Absolutely. And you're, the factor was right. None is going to go to the top. You know, we just put it on there. None, yep. 25, because TV basically blows. The sheet, in fact, I would say I spent about 30% uh, of my time. About 30, man. No, more like 80% of my TV viewing time channel surfing. Right. Trying to find That's something. Great. Oh, there's that uh, Raymond Hultman who's a... Uh, molested boys. I cannot believe that a after some of the, the testimony was offered, I can't believe that that this man could sleep in the same bedroom for 365 straight days uh, and not do something more than just watch television and eat popcorn. Oh, he's forgetting about the milk and cookies. He's forgetting about that. It's beautiful. Right. And, and again, isn't he one of the jurors that said that they wanted their anonymity and to go home and be left alone? And here, every 10 seconds he's on there now with his name and the whole deal. Why is it that most people are such media whores? Remember we did the poll a couple of days ago about the media mm -hmm. whores? Why is it that most people are like that? They are. How many Great invitations have I have have been extended to me over the years to be on uh, CNN, on Crossfire, this show, that? Yeah, that doesn't count. Uh, You're already famous. A zillion of those. No, 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 that's not the point. The point is for what? What? what is, are they going to pay me for it? No. Is it going to uh, increase my income? No. So what do I need it for? Who right. needs it? Well, you're not desperate for attention. like somebody. I see. What? Oh, so in other words, Kendall Coffey is desperate for attention? You know and it. Jesse Jackson is starving for attention? Oh, and there he is again. I don't want to yes, give is. the impression There's that, that you're again. a really slam dunk deal where you just go in to a room and 12 people agree. I don't think 12 people can agree on anything except that the sun might come up tomorrow morning. And beyond that, you got to talk about it. What? Did he say your sun might come up to Neverland tomorrow morning? Something like that. What one TV show you never miss? 60 Minutes 34, None 26, Deadwood 22, The Shield 21. Is that the Brook Shield? The Daily Show 19, 24, 15, 15, 24, Judge Judy 13, Jeopardy 13. What a horrible show. The Dave Chappelle Show on uh, Comedy Central 12. That 70s show, 11. Uh, talk about bad. Nobody said that Gotti show, the uh, growing up Gotti yet, thank God. Huh, but they will. That? Nobody has said no, they Dick won't. and Jessica yet, but they will. Nobody has said, uh, what's her name, uh, the uh, singer that can't sing, but they will. Which one? There's so many. Jessica. Uh, Ashley Simpson. Simpson. Ashley oh, that Simpson, one. right. <laughs> With a cute boyfriend. Smallville 9, South Park 8, Guiding Light 6, CSI 5, Battlestar Galactica 4, Wheel of Fortune 4, the OC 3, Price is Right 3, NBC Dateline 3, the McLaughlin Group 2, Passions has got a pair, and The Wire has got one. See, what, what the, all, these, all this verbiage, all these billions of words that have exp extended in the last uh, 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 half a day, or whatever it's been now, uh, they're, they're just in denial about the pedophile. See what I'm saying? Cute. He's not going to change. You, there is no cure for pedophiles, all right? Whatever he likes now, that's what he's always been like. He's 46 freaking years old. He likes little nine, ten-year-old boys. Even when the, when the chimp got too old, he tossed them out of Neverland. Right. Oh, he's too old for me now. Bubbles. I was here. Was, he was caught one time singing that song in the shower. I'm forever. I can't sing. No, you can't. Not anymore. <laughs> time. Oh no, Joyce! Please, just once. No. I say it. No, Joyce. No, okay. we'll right past it. I'm forever <laughs> bubbles. An old-fashioned cargo plane suffered engine trouble, slammed into a residential street. And, of course, this was going on simultaneous with the uh, Jackson verdict. And so the local channels, George tells me, had, like, uh, side by each. They right. had the old split-screen split routine, screen, right? Mm -hmm. In northeast Fort Lauderdale yesterday, sliding 100 yards on its belly before skidding to a halt and exploding into a fireball. Oh, I'd like to see Fat Boy do that. 
The three, the plane's three occupants, including the pilot, a Vietnam veteran who said he'd handled rough landings before, scrambled out with minor injuries. No one on the ground was seriously hurt. That was a miracle, you know? Yeah. Wasn't it? It was. Wow. It must have been an act of God, you know, God saved It him. was an act of... Oh, God! It was a flashback from Vietnam. You just do what you have to do, said pilot Charles Riggs. I wonder if he's kin to Jack Riggs, who called the races at Hazel Park for 50 years. Who said he tried to save lives by landing on the street? We were going to, we were going for a big wide spot we could aim for, and then we saw trees, and that was good as well. Added co-pilot Charles Wirt, I'm just glad we didn't take anybody else out. When in doubt, don't take anybody out. Local residents were more than just glad; they were incredulous, incredulous. It was absolutely un. Believable. It's hard to imagine describing a plane accident as a miracle, but the fact that nobody was killed when a plane crashed in one neighborhood can only be described as a miracle. Fort Lauderdale City Manager George Gretz has said. One home sustained roof and tile damage after being clipped by the wings. At least a half dozen cars parked on the street were damaged, one seared by flames, and a tree caught on fire. But other than that, in a neighborhood in Northridge Medical Center, Northeast High School, and other buildings, officials said the incident could have erupted into a full-blown disaster. The twin-engine 12-ton plane, a version of the vintage DC-3 airliner, took off from Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport at 3.50 p.m., groaning with 3,200 pounds of granite in its cargo bay, bound for Marsh Harbor in the Bahamas, authorities said. When it was three, that's exactly what it was doing. When it was 300 feet in the air, tower controller saw smoke coming from the left engine and tried to alert the crew by radio but got no response, said Jose Obergon, accident investigator with the NTSB. The plane crashed at 3.51 p.m., skidding down northeast 56th Street before coming to rest near the intersection of North e northeast 18th Avenue and Coral Ridge Isles neighborhood. This isn't far from the busy intersection of Federal Highway and Commercial Boulevard, an area we all know very, very, very well, an area teeming with office buildings, schools, medical complexes, churches, and shopping centers. In the explosion, the tail separated from the main fuselage, and the main cabin was ripped apart. The occupants, Ridge of, uh, Pembroke Pines, Riggs of Pembroke Pines, Wirt of Miami, and passenger Hector Espinosa of Lantana, escaped from an overhead cockpit hatch. About ten seconds later, the plane burst into flames. Other than minor burns, scrapes, and banged-up knees, none of the three appeared to be hurt seriously, but they were still taken nearby Holy Cross Hospital for treatment. Roberto Colina, 30, about 30 man. was driving his car when he saw the plane angling toward him. He swerved to the right and avoided the plane by about, about 30, 30 man. feet. I'm thinking, oh, my God, I can't believe it, he said. Oh, God. That's what he was thinking. Oh, my God. Roberto Rowan, 33, heard a bump and then a horrible screeching noise. The next moment he looked out his apartment window saw the plane slam down within 150 feet of his front poach. He said he saw the three occupants run from the plane to avoid the explosion. Rowan offered them water and a soda, probably some Jesus juice. He said the pilot appeared to be calm and collected. They said the left engine didn't work. He was trying to keep the plane straight, but he kept losing speed and altitude, so he looked for a spot to land on 56th Street. Rowan said he shook the pilot's hand and thanked him for not hitting his apartment. Thanks for not killing me. Yeah. Money right. you. Nice going. Nice going, Captain. You see that? You have to have some experienced guy there flying a plane as opposed to some punk, some mm -hmm. schmuck, like those two punks on the jury there yesterday. 1113 at 560 WQM. If you're looking for a high-speed Internet service, you want one that is fast, one that's reliable, one that's easy to use. In short, you want the best. You want the number one high-speed Internet service provider in the USA, Comcast High-Speed Internet. It's 100% pure broadband. Network blows away the competition with speeds up to 15 times faster than DSL Lite. Download music, download photos, streaming video, online games faster than ever before. Simply put, Comcast High-Speed Internet gives you the very best Internet experience around. And with features like the fan, video email, security manager, and radio plus, it's even more intense than ever before. And right now, you can get you Comcast High-Speed Internet for just nine ninety five a month for the first two months. Call 1-800-COMCAST and get the number one high-speed Internet service in the USA today. Certain restrictions apply. Call for details that toll-free number. Just call 1-800-COMCAST. When it comes to sports, we're the authority. Sports Radio 560. QAM. Yeah. A damn faggot. I can't stand him. She can't act, she can't sing What's a girl to do? My sexy older sister She can barely tie her shoe Then you got her called her He said she was the best She thought he meant her singing But he really meant her chest And so if you are looking through A Playboy magazine You'll see my older sister On the pages in between I've just been told A million copies have been sold My sister is a fan of old Victoria is a fan of old been told my sister is a cynophobe. 
Show you can. Daddy says you've lost your mind, and I think Bubbles just went blind. Jermaine, Tito, Janet too. They all think you've ruined us, but I don't care what they all think. The toy, you just mooned us. Your body looks just like my own, but I would need some silicone. Oh no, I can't deny it. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna try it. Call Doctor Gold and tell him to make up a mold. I'm gonna be a centipede. He's gonna be a centipede. Hello, Dr. Gold. Take that change. Hey, feel that change. It's 11:19 at 5:60. Brian and Papa Robert says these jurors aren't just waiting for their dollar. Are just waiting for their uh, multi-dollar book deals to start rolling. And the jury foreman yesterday said he wasn't comfortable answering one of the questions asked, probably so he can save it for his book. Plus that fat bitch Joyce. How come everybody named Joyce is a bitch? I don't know. They couldn't stop from smiling. They just want to get their lives back till they get an agent for their stories. They're all media horrors, says Brian and Pompano Beach. Brian, you are absolutely correct, sir. Okay. All they're feeding us is just a pack of lies. Anyway, any excuse I get to play that, especially on this station. Here's one from Ephraim in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who says, My entries for the poll are shows that appear on A&E Network. American Justice, as Bill Curtis says. American Justice. Got it? Got it. American Justice. And the first 48. The first 48 is an awesome show about real-life homicides and a subsequent investigation by real-life homicide detectives. It is great. They're both great. The title befits the fact that if detectives don't have a suspect to release some great leads within the first 48 hours after the crime is committed, then the chances for solving crime decrease dramatically. And what's the other one there on A&E that I watch all the time? Biography. Biography. Huh? Right. Now, do we call that a show, or is that, uh, I don't know how you say that. Show? It is? Sure. It's a show on A&E, because there's mm-hmm. also the Biography Channel, but on A&E, it's a show. Biography yeah. show. And also, Ephraim, who really rose many, many points in my estimation with this sentence right here, says, By the way, I hate that damn Nancy Grace like poison. Well, I got news for it. That's good. But not anywhere near like how much yeah. I hate her. Or me. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I hated her wow. first. She is disgusting. Now, you know how uh, Diane Diamond and one of the other ones, I think from MSNBC, they were complaining that they got all these death threats and harassment threats sitting there outside the courtroom during the trial? Nope. Not being a violent person myself, but I might once in a while make an exception. If Nancy Grace, mm-hmm. if they should, like, tie her up and, like, put her on the floor here, right here, right next to me, I might have to, like, take a two-by-four with several rusty nails in it. I mean, she just makes me caca, mm-hmm. that Nancy Grace. Okay, thank you, friend. Thank you. We'll get back to you later, friend. Oh, jeez. Man. And she's an idiot. Being diabetic, I can't handle that syrup. My blood sugar goes... As soon as I see her face on the TV, my blood sugar goes up 200 points. What? And she's an idiot. Yeah. Oh, a bubblehead. Really Total bubblehead. Simpleton. Yeah. And here she is on court TV, and of course, she's, she's trying the case on the air. She's doing her own. Not that she can't offer an opinion, but she goes way beyond that. She is just, uh, and she's got her own show there on Headline News, and she's on with Larry. She's hosting for Larry. She's all over the place. Larry King is the Antichrist. He really is. What a what a lying sack of crap. Uh-huh. Piece of garbage. Uh, here's one from Bob and Coral Springs. I never missed the original Law and Order series. Law and Order. Got it? We got it. Bob also makes a good point. He said, you made a comment about Jesse Jackson needing attention. Yes, he needs attention. Being famous or known is different from his need for att- attention. Yeah, he needs mental attention is what he needs. And maybe like a little speech therapy, too, wouldn't hurt. I mean, anybody who like like to rhyme all the time, uh, you know, needs to turn into a mime. Right? That's cute. You know, mm-hmm. we're just nice dummy. Rhyming. Yeah, he makes me want to climb Not off the timing. roof, off the balcony. And American, this is one of the great stories. Does she not that we're nervous or anything like that in America? As we continue the search for American justice, uh, Bill Curtis, I mean, he's, he's good, but so melodramatic, you know, overdone. A little overkill there, Bill. Just tone it down. One or two notches, Bill, okay? We know you're a real intellectual and a wonderful guy, but American justice. Oh, he just... In fact, what the channel is that on? I mean, you don't know. I'm yep. talking about here. Uh, well, it's on A&E. And how come I can't find A&E right now? I don't know. Oh, I see, because I'm looking on the wrong number. Here it is. So many songs, they had enough for a second album, which was released in 19... 19- Clint Black? Who the hell is that? 
Redneck uh, Yahoo. Oh, uh, country family. singer Clint yeah. Black. All right, it's a biography. Like I said, I hate that show. Oh, Lord. Come on, baby. Wait those hands. Oh, I better get that off of there. That's uh, one of the, the third, third watch on A&E. <clears throat> I'm working on my fourth watch right now. It's a uh, Seiko. It's a Jose Can... Seiko? An American Airlines jet flight from New York to Seattle was diverted to Chicago yesterday, last night, after a suspicious item was found on board. Authorities said it turned out to be a radio. Oh, oh my God. God. A passenger saw the item in one of the plane's restrooms and told a flight attendant said Chicago police spokesman David Banks... I wonder if he's kin to Dolly Banks, or maybe the former uh, Chicago area driver. In fact, Chicago, Stanley Banks. The police bomb and arson unit and the FBI determined it was an older-looking Walkman-type radio, Banks said. It was a big to-do over nothing, Banks said. If it weren't so serious, it would be laughable. <laughs> the 158 passengers and six crew members were evacuated after the plane landed at 8.30 p.m., said airline spokeswoman Mary Frances Fagan. No one was hurt. No one was hurt. Oh, Jesus. That's good. Well, this nobody dropped the it on their toe, you know. Flight 289 originated from JFK in New York. The flight crew asked to land at Chicago's Francis O'Hare International Airport so officials there could inspect something on the aircraft, said Chicago Aviation Department spokeswoman Kristen Can- Cabanon Bond. C A B A N, a cabin ban. Oh, okay. that's what they had in there. They had a cabin ban. After the plane was searched, Fagan said passengers returned to the aircraft, took off for Seattle around 11.20 last night because they found a suspicious-looking thing in the restroom. It was a radio. And, of course, radio is becoming like dinosaurs. I mean, what, what, what that? What that? Radio. Oh, Desperate Housewives. All right, here you go. For Eva Longoria, it says. Eva Longoria? Okay. One of the chicks on the show? I thought they were going to say for what's-his-name, uh, Miguel. What is his name again? I don't know. I do know it, but it's not worth thinking about uh, I don't watch that show. Uh, here's one that says, suggestion for your poll, the young and a restless, go Malcolm. All right. Oh. You know he's back on that show? No, I, I didn't know. Well, I'm just telling you right now, Malcolm is back on that show. What is his name again? You know it. Oh, Shamar Moore. Shamar Moore. Uh, yeah, that's what we want. More Shamar Moore. He is back on that show. I don't watch that show either, but boy, he sure does still look good, Shamar Moore. He's a male model, you know. You fair. No, I don't. I don't know. Maybe. I thought that was Nick they were talking about. And Nick got married. He's having a whole bunch of kids now because, what's his name? Oh, we're Dan fine. Dan Stewart came on the show that day and tried to out him. That, that was so bad. Dan Stewart is a real Joyce hole, you know. He's an idiot. Why did yeah. you invite him in that day? Oh, yeah. yeah you know, we're such Probably the same reason you invited Alan with the Ron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I just can't stop. You cannot stop. That's why they hate you like poison all around the building. That's what Greg told me. Right, among other reasons. Twenty, And, of course, uh, you and Boca Brian. I mean, once you brought him in. Take off those checkered pants. Tabloid Latoya with your tell-all book Exposing the Jackson family, you're a kook But naked and playboy, you bear all for some cash You're more suited for the inquirer, girl, you're trash All the dirt on all the Jacksons you tell Damn faggot. I can't stand okay, it. Okay, calm down. 11.32, 28 till noon. And, of course, everybody's supposed to have forgotten about that. Now, do you, ha- do you have the uh, cart there? I don't want to put a lot of yeah. pressure on you because you might actually have to move. What? Yeah, it's in here. The yeah. cart with, with the whole thing. My mother is comes very from. much aware of all the children that were there, all the boys that stayed there. And she is the one who always said that Michael, excuse my expression, but he's a faggot. And she would say that damn faggot. I can't stand him. How do you like that? That was Mama Jacks, not Mama Corleone. And uh, everybody in the family knew it. But you notice they were all there to lend their support because they went back on that gravy train. I noticed even three of the family dogs were there. They heard the gravy train was going to be there. Yeah, makes its own gravy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's what Michael kept telling those little boys. The Jesus juice? No, something else. Anyway, uh, John Nichols writes in the online beat of all things in the nation, King of Distraction. Michael Jackson has been acquitted on ten charges of child molestation and related wrongs that were brought against the self-proclaimed king of pop. So what? That's right. So what? 
Jackson's trial was certainly of consequence to the 46-year-old poster boy for arrested development, and it is undoubtedly uh, and it undoubtedly mattered to his accuser and the boy's family. It was also a big deal for the legal team that got Jackson off, so to speak, and for the man who brought the prosecution, Santa Barbara County District Attorney Tom Stedden, whose bizarre career of headline grabbing has taken a definite turn for the worse. But nothing about the Michael Jackson trial mattered to the rest of America. It was merely a soap opera that served for 18 long months to distract the citizenry from the serious business of electing a president, protecting the retirement security from Wall Street raiders, and following the degeneration of the war in Iraq and the quagmire it was destined to be. Make no mistake, big media corporations loved the Jackson trial because it was cheap to cover. Set up a camera in front of the California courthouse and the hard work is done. And because it had a lowest common denominator appeal that could always be relied on to titillate audiences trained to believe that celebrity gossip is news. The problem with big media cynical game of feeding the American public a junk food diet of movie star romances and showbiz scandals is that eventually perspective starts to get lost. On Monday, a breathless CBS radio news announcer described the Jackson verdict as the lead story of the day, perhaps the month, perhaps of the year. If that announcer was even remotely right, then America is in serious trouble because while much of the media may choose to make the Jackson story the lead in its reports, this tired little tabloid report is not the story that matters. It is, however, the story that keeps on giving to the powerful players in Washington who prefer to avoid the sort of scrutiny that's directed at the Michael Jackson of the moment. Notably, on the day that the story of Jackson's acquittal dominated the national news, Vice President Cheney was cheerfully handing out journalism awards at the National Press Club in Washington. While the reporters who received the Gerald Ford Journalism Awards from the Vice President were officially the ones being honored, it was Cheney who had the most to be thankful for. So long as the so-called news media continues to use most of its might and most of the public's airwaves to distract the American people from the real lead stories about the misdeeds of a government that sent over 1,700 of this country's sons and daughters to needless death in Iraq or, and about war profiteering by corporations such as Cheney's former employer Halliburton, the Vice President and his cronies have even more to celebrate than Michael Jackson. And, of course, he is... Absolutely. Correct, John Nichols in the nation on our website, or at least it will be. It's on there. Okay, it's on there. That's what Josh said. It's on there. It's in there. So Josh and Georgia got their flavor wave of uh, deluxe ovens now, and I'm sure that tomorrow will be getting a report. I'm sure I hope you so. will. I sure as hell hope so. Don't burn yourself now. It burns. What one TV show on today do you never miss? Now, who's this bitch? How are you? Allison Samuels from Newsweek. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Oh, bye, Allison. Uh, none, 52. Boy, that fact's are we sure right. None of the above, no TV show. Uh, is really that good. Zoom way to the top, and it's running away, man. Just like a fleet Alex in the Belmont. 52 votes. 60 Minutes got 38. The Daily Show, 29. 24, 29. Got it? Got it. 24 got 29 votes. 29 got 24 votes. Deadwood, 28. Must be great. Never seen Deadwood. I have seen Deadwood, but not the show. In fact, we got a lot of it at QAM. The Shield, 27. Jeopardy, 15. 16. Uh, Dave Chappelle Show, 15. Judge Judy. And her grotesque punim, 14. South Park, 13. CSI, 11. That 70 Show, 11. Smallville, 11. The Simpsons, 8. Guiding Light, 7. Uh, how's Coop doing? Battlestar Oop. Galactica, 5. The OC, 5. Wheel of Fortune, 4. Which, uh, I will say this, in spite of our audience, Wheel of Fortune outrates, except for when, uh, what's his name, Ken Jenny, I mean Jennings was on there, on Jeopardy. Wheel of Fortune spanks them badly. Okay. I just mentioned that, even though no, I'm no, a Jeopardy fan. No, I, like no ice cream I prefer yeah, Wheel really of Fortune good. myself. Uh, Law and Order 3, although they're showing reruns this week. Boy, does that piss me off. There's, there is nothing worse than watching a game show that's a rerun, you know? I mean, what What's is that? Point? First like of all, you know, all the puzzles, that's uh -huh. first. But at least, you know, your Alzheimer's isn't kicking in because you remember the puzzles. It's like watching sports highlights. It would do that. Yeah, it would be like wa watching the old, no, seriously, like watching old games on TV again. Put two pokes at it. Now it's in working around well along the board. Got it out here for shot. Oh, crossbar! Anyway. Uh, but that was good timing, wasn't it? Nice ping there on a crossbar. Ping, that is. Okay. okay carried away. Say. Law and Order 3, The McLaughlin Group 3, Price is Right 3, NBC Dateline 3. Passions 2. See, this audience is not a passions crowd. They don't realize that Sheridan is the hottest woman on the face of the earth, or one of them anyway. I'll tell you who the hottest uh, woman is. Who that? What the hell is her name? She's a reporter for um, CFTO here in Toronto. The hottest woman I have ever seen in my life. Young, uh, wow. Well, what is her name? A Jewish girl. Goldstein. Does that sound Jewish to you? Well, not does. that one. Different girl. Uh, Passions 2, Desperate Housewives 1, American Justice 1, uh, The Wires got one, and none yet. And like you said, why do they fax him or call him in when they don't vote for him? The Young uh, and the Horny, none. A&E Biography, none. The First 48, none. And Mad TV has none. Uh, her name is, uh, oh, gee, I'm going to have to write it down. Not that it makes any difference. Unless anybody in Ontario can see it. Man, oh, man, she is really some knockout. She's the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. I wow. don't like that. And she's Jewish. 
Well, George ain't too happy about that. What? I just knocked you out, by the way. I just knocked off the uh, <laughs> the return. I knocked off the return. That's a good idea. Anyway. Oh, and I meant to mention this on when, with Hank this morning when we did our little cross-dress over with the humper. Because he went to Duke, didn't he? Yes. Uh, two triangle hospitals run by Duke University Health Systems put patients in immediate jeopardy last year by failing to detect that surgical instruments were being washed in used hydraulic fluid instead of a detergent. Okay. Operating room doctors and nurses complained about slick tools and frustrated sterilization crews had to run extra wash cycles, the regulators reported, but hospital administrators didn't fix the problem for weeks. In November and December, 3,800 patients at Duke Health Raleigh and Durham Regional Hospitals were exposed to surgery with the contaminated instruments that had been washed in hydraulic fluid. Okay. Well, I bet they make your innards nice and slippery. Administrative staff failed to heed the multiple complaints of staff sterilizing and using the instruments, thus delaying the discovery of the error and needlessly exposing patients to these instruments over a longer period of time, the investigation reports say. When Duke Health officials disclosed the mistake in January, they assured patients that the likelihood of infection was no more than the risk normally associated with the procedures patients underwent. But seven months later, dozens of patients who were exposed to these surgical instruments are reporting lingering health problems, some minor like fatigue and joint pain, others serious requiring hospitalization. Man, oh, man, they got a lube in their cube. Some patients say hospital officials dismissed their symptoms when they reported them, though they were urged to notify hospitals of any signs of infection. They say the hospitals have not monitored the problems that arose. As they search for proper treatment, many have asked Duke to tell them what was used in the used hydraulic fluid, a petroleum product called 32AW, manufactured by Exxon, that may have picked up particles from its use in the elevator. Oh, my God. Duke has responded. <laughs> Isn't that great? Lovely. Duke has responded that it's still investigating, can't yet provide such details. Duke Health System officials declined to be interviewed, citing possible lawsuits. At least 50 patients who develop complications have taken their concerns to lawyers. No suits yet, but there will be. Trust me, there will be. Mm -hmm. Duke officials issued a short statement reiterating that infection rates are not notably higher than would be typically expected, urging patients to talk with their doctors about concerns. Like when their liver starts like slipping out of their abdomen, things like that. When in doubt, watch it pop out. And the liver, too. 1141, 19 till noon at QA. And we got the Mo Man at 2. The Mo Man is going to have Bill Scowron's mother in law as his guest this afternoon. Jim Mandich at 4, the Mad Dog. Then Curtis, 7 to 7.30. Before that, Marlins and Cubs stuff. Eddie K follows the baseball game. Follows another Marlins win tonight, maybe. Now, wasn't that uh, Don Trella pitch last night? Is that win number 11? That's right. How do you like that? See, I'm not following it that closely. I did watch for about 14 seconds. They had the Cub telecast on there. I didn't want to see that. I want to see our boy, Rich. Hey, if you're looking in the mirror and you got that big, glaring bald spot, in fact, it's like walking around like being a human beacon, you know? The sun shines off your head, you're like a human reflector. Well, it ain't so good because it makes you look kind of schmutzy and also makes you look a lot older, too. If you want a really good head of hair, call my good friend Chuck Alfieri. Because for over 30 long, amazing years now, about 30, man. Charlie's been helping the famous, the not-so-famous, and everybody in between look their best. Because Charlie has invented the best, the most natural-looking system in the universe. Don't forget now, the most critical area of any hair system is that hairline. And Charlie's new skin-like hair system is 100% detectable. Looks like real hair growing right out of your scalp, as opposed to you-know-what. And Charlie's work is completely guaranteed. You have nothing to lose but that ugly, shiny, bald spot. You try Charlie's system for a month, for about 30 days. And after a month, if you don't love the way it looks, feels, and smells, if you're not getting all kinds of action, just return it for a full refund. Say, hey, Char Charlie, here's your hair back. Make the call today, toll-free, 1-800-321-2413. Tell Charlie you heard about it here on the Neil Rogers Show and get a special $200 discount off the already low regular price, 800 bucks for that natural hairline system. This is the best way to get you a great-looking head of hair that nobody will realize ain't the real thing. Call toll-free. There's no obligation. Call 1-800-321-2413. That's 1-800-321-2413 or on the Wicked Web. It's charlesalfieri.com. When it comes to entertainment... It's Neil Rogers. Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560. Q-A-N. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems I'm out of change for once in my life. Should have planned ahead. Put off the laundry to tomorrow night. But then I wanted some melon bar, so I put the candy bar from a vending machine. I put a carbon tree. 
for me to be Not a king, she was seen I used up all the change I need Should have realized then Should have broke up ten Should have known That there'd be a toll on the way back home But I got nowhere to go That's why I'm asking you, Joe to the man in the I'm asking him to make some change But he answered the but I just told you If you want to cross the bridge You can all the lane Cause this lane's only at that It's 11 till noon at QM. Let's take about 400 calls, get some more TV shows on the list, because i got a big, oozing pile here, man. Oh, good. I really do. In fact, John Carroll, this is a great article. I just, uh, I think I just uh, sent it to you. It's for tomorrow, though. Why are the Democrats such weenies? WQAM, hello. Not there. Only Oscar Meyer knows for sure. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. Again, it sent us that fax earlier, the complainer. Uh, too bad. We're playing all these Michael and uh, Latoya Jackson bits. I like them. WQAM, hello. Neil, how are you doing today? Pretty good, Pally. So, uh, John Nichols is a great writer, by the way. Yes, he is. Um, I was just thinking with the Michael Jackson thing, all through, the, Steve Nichols. Yes. All, all through the campaign, we were like told about like John Edwards was like this sleazy trial lawyer and the lawyers. Right. And now this media can't get enough lawyers on the television in front of us. Right. I noticed they uh, dragged out Bobby Shapiro again last night. Bobby Shapiro, who's disappeared. I mean, it, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's so transparent, and yeah. yet no one... Well, the American media is just uh, totally hopeless. Anybody that watches that, their brains are going to turn to jello. And if if this had been a, a President Gore, this wouldn't even be noticed. That they would be going after him like a pack of rabid dogs. No, you bet. Happened. You bet. And if a Democrat is lucky enough or unlucky enough to get elected in 2008, I I predict the media is going to turn on him as soon as he if takes Tipper the If Tipper Gore would have missed two lyrics in some CD uh, that's in the uh, music stores, they'd have been all over her like stink on uh, Bush. And I I, go to, I think every radio, every station, well, they won't play it, but that song from the 60s, For What It's Worth, by Buffalo Springfield, should be yeah. playing on every every radio station. But I know it will never happen. Take it. care, Neil. Okay, thanks. I got it. Oh, jeez. Careful. Uh-oh, what would you do? I just dropped a uh, cassette. Okay. Cassette? What's that? I got for what it's worth. I mean, maybe I'll just play that the rest of the day, and then I can always say, well, the caller suggested I play it all day. Right. right? Well, he's getting, I mean, his intentions are good, but he just, uh, he's hes a farting into a windstorm, see? Mm-hmm. Oh, don't tell me that I put that thing away because I put a whole bunch of stuff away, oy vey, and I may have just uh, stuffed that in my drawers, so to speak. Uh-oh. There's Al Hibbler. You want to hear uh, that? Who? Unchained Melody by Al Hibbler. It sure as hell beats the hell out of the Righteous Brothers, or whichever one is still alive. The I, I, don't know. I don't know, and I don't want to care, okay? The Unrighteous Brothers. I'm going to have to, during the break, I'll look in the drawer, and I'll dig that baby out. And okay. the uh, thing, too. I, I got it. This thing takes forever. To no, open. no, I don't want you Don't play it off of there. I got it. I got the, the thing. Okay. Boca Brian, your friend Boca Brian sent it to me. You know the one that they hate like poison because they have to pay him? Just mentioned it for what it's worth. No cut. Anyway. <laughs> five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Michael Jackson is my hero, buddy. Okay, good. I'm happy for you. WQAM, hello. QAM, hello. QAM. You thought our league is a Betty Gay. WQAM, hello. Neil Pope. Yes. How are you, sir? Good. Hey, uh, I want to let you know that you are absolutely correct, sir, about the banana nut. It's a dream. Oh, Absolutely you you delightful. Found it? Yeah, found you it. Found it. Found it at a Publix in Lighthouse Point. But hey, uh, even better Hagen than does. that. Yeah. Hagen does. Hagen does. You, you'll be cursing me in about a month. No, even better than that. Have you tried the Hagen does vanilla? I don't want to hear about it's it. It's awesome. I don't like vanilla anyway. Go ahead. Okay, that was it. 
Five six seven oh five sixty. I don't want to hear about no more ice cream. I've got my eleven days without no ice cream. My blood sugar is great, and I can't eat it. Okay, I screwed around long enough, and I'm like killing myself. A slow but sure death, and I'm not ready quite yet. Especially, I'd like to at least get this nice freebie summer vacation over. Then I'm then I'll be ready. All right. <laughs> WQ, QIM, Hello. Hey, how you doing, Sally? Okay, sir. Hey, what's up? Good morning, Neil. One for your poll. Yep. The Family Guy. The Family Guy. You ever watch that? Never saw it. Oh, man, I strongly recommend it. It's a cartoon network at 1130. It's dope. Okay. Hey, and one more about Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, he seemed real upset about not going to jail. I guess he's not going to have as much fun as he thought, huh? Now, there's no little kids in there. 5670560, oh, pound 560. Maybe they can send him to Juvie. Juvie Hall and uh, the Verizon Singer of Rhino Slime, whatever it is. Uh, WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How about cops in America Most Wanted for your polls? Cops hey, in America's Most Wanted. Neil, Wanted. it's... Um, is that old, decrepit Paul something still alive that does that Can't super report? Har- Harvey. Paul Harvey. Harvey, yes. Good day. He dead yet? No. no. Damn, he's still, all right. He's still broadcasting down in the basement yeah. with Angelina Jolie. He's coughing up blood. Is he really? I hope no. so. No, no, he's all right. If he if he died, then we well, we still could have those bits because that ain't him sure. anyway. <laughs> yeah, and those forever. bits are a lot more entertaining than he ever was. Good day. Well, I tell you, there was quite an uproar on IOD when I started on that station. Remember that? No, you I weren't did. there yet. No, not yet. They, that, that format was so screwed up. Of course, that's when they held, had Bill Not So Wise was the PD. They hired me. They paid me all that money, which at that time was a lot of money. And uh, and then they had the format also. They had Rick Weaver's sports commentary, which they uh, Schmidt canned at the first day. And then uh, they had Paul Harvey at 12.30, 50 minutes right there in the middle of my show. I said, you people got to be Schmidt and me. And they said, oh, we don't know no Schmidt. And I said, that's obvious. Did they also so have they, the uh, they, the they Schmidt canned it. They dumped it. Paul Harvey, goodbye. And that was the end of that. He's uh, just annoying. WQAM, hello. I need attention. WQAM, yeah, that's obvious. QAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How about Blind Justice? Blind Justice, okay. He plays, uh, what team does he play for now, the Indians? 5670560. Oh, Is he still playing Dave Justice or uh, just. He's in the him? booth, man. He's in the booth? Yeah, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. In, in whose booth? ESPN. Oh, boy. Isn't that sad? Now, who was he married to? Halle Berry, that hated him like he was, right? Yeah. Wow. The things that she said about him, all of which I'm sure were true. 567. Oh, he did look pretty good once upon a time. Pound 560 in the Verizon and Singular Wireless Line. Speaking of Malcolm. WQAM, hello. Hey, yeah, can I get on with Neil? Uh, what do you got? I want to ask him about Pink, uh, the Pink Floyd re- uh, reuniting and touring. No, we don't want people. him to talk about Pink Floyd. 567. See, it's a good thing I asked him. Uh, pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless Lines. WQAM, hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. I love your show, man. Yeah. I would like to get on your poll. Yeah, I bet you would. WQAM, hello. Neil, I never miss an episode of Wounded Sample. <laughs> oh, all right. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, don't you think they should close the prison in Cuba for the Abu Ghraib and uh, Poconos prisons? Yeah, for the Poconos uh, prison, right, where the, all the old Jews are in the Poconos, right. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how are you? Pretty good. Sit here, man. Hey, listen, uh, the ice cream from haagen is called Bananas Foster, by the way. No, it is not. Bananas they, Foster, they, they, have, they have one called Bananas Foster, but the one that I've had is Banana Nut. Not oh, the Bananas Foster is good, man. It's is got it? that rum and that brown sugar in there. Oh, well, listen, enjoy it. I don't want to hear about no ice cream, okay? Stick it. Stuff it. Put it where the moon don't shine, okay? Take your banana nut you fairy. and your bananas foster and feed them to like old uh, Fearless, Fo- Fearless Fosdick. Remember that cartoon? Of course not. It's on no. before you were born. Yeah, you do. I don't remember that. Fearless well, just what? pretend you do. Oh, that Let's cartoon. See. Yeah, it says here, uh, Wally Cleaver, <laughs> the new Marlin TV announcer, Rich something, Rich Waltz, always uh, annoying the hell out of me, uh, but I finally realized who he really is after looking at him after last night's Cubs game, Beaver Cleaver's older brother, Wally Cleaver. Wally. He don't look like no Wally to me. I, maybe I never saw him. I don't think I want to. Rich Walls. Does he look like Wally? Does I don't know who Wally is. Thin plastic belts. From Leave It to Beaver. Oh, don't tell me you don't know. From, I don't. I won't tell Georgia you don't know who Bing Crosby is. Uh, it's, I, it's not that I don't know who he is. I've never, you know. But you don't You don't know who Bing Crosby he's is. He's foreign to me, yeah. Very like, fortunate that he's avoided Bing Crosby. Yeah, that, that's true. I would agree with that. I, we said that the other day. I and, absolutely and agree. Beaver. Now, who's the other one we just saw? And you never saw Leave it to Beaver? I've seen Leave it to Beaver, but it's not like I uh, I remember anything Well, about you it. better start being a student because that's a very important part of American culture, okay, sir? And you better start getting, on getting some of those pencil-thin leather belts like uh, Wally used to wear. The plastic ones, of course. Right.
to relax by having Mary Magdalene massage my balls while listening to the Neil Rogers 12 to 1 hour. <laughs> Something happening here. Wait, you hear that? What it is hmm. ain't exactly... Having that one channel effect, do you hear that? I do. I, I think it only does that on my top deck. Remember we had this happen once before? Yes, it did. That's exciting. I like that a lot. In fact, maybe we could play like one channel one hour and then kill the next hour with the other channel. What do you think? We could compare. It's something to think about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. I got your both channels. I got both channels too, Mister. I got your channel right Something over here. Happening here. I'm catching up here. Something happening we could do this here. and we'd have a rap song. We could do this all day. Okay, that's enough. We don't want to chase them away. They don't want to hear no protest songs. That was back in the '60s, man. We don't want to be you no know, protesting right now. They'll come and drag us away. Nobody will ever see us again, like Jose Padilla. Anyway, it's 12.05 at QM. Here's that story by Joe Carroll, who writes for the San Francisco Chronicle. Joe Carroll says, why are the Democrats such weenies? Howard Dean makes the unremarkable statement that the GOP is the party of white Christians, and other Democrats run and flee and say, oh, no, oh, no. And a Republican Yahoo accuses Dean of a political hate speech. Neither white nor Christian is an epithet. A glance at the videotape from last year's Republican convention indicates that both characterizations are entirely fair. They are absolutely correct, sir. And yet some Democrats think Dean is being too confrontational. We should be nice to the lying liars, or people will think we're gas partisan. Partisan is a good thing. It's what the founding fathers had in mind. The problem comes when one party stays very partisan, and the other party starts modifying and mollifying to try to find some mythical friendly center. I love Mr. Rogers, but I never thought he'd make a good chairman of the DNC. So maybe lunatic liberals should keep a few things in mind. First, the Bush administration is increasingly unpopular. The latest ABC Washington Post poll reveals that 52% of the American people disapprove of the way Bush is running the country. Asked specifically about Iraq and the numbers climb, 58% disapprove of his handling of the war. Which means, according to Eric Alterman, George W. Bush's approval rating is now a full 20 points lower than Bill Clinton's was on the day he was impeached. I believe the American people want a party that will express their displeasure at the elitist and corrupt Bush administration in strong and vigorous terms, says Joe Carroll. John, whatever his name is. Carroll. O'Connor. People should stop believing the bluff bluff that the bluff fluff that Fox News represents some significant percentage of the populace. The latest Nielsen ratings show the Fox News Channel has 1.7 million viewers in prime time, with only 416,000 falling into the 25 to 54 demographic. This is a nation of 300 million people. However much noise it makes and however much room it takes up in the brains of media people, Fox is a very small muffin in a very large bakery, a small, weasened, bitter muffin. Ignore it, everyone else does. What's wizened? Old. A leader since February, the U.S. Army has missed its recruiting goals every month, sometimes by as much as 40%. People do not like the war, and they don't want their sons and daughters dying in the cause of whatever the cause is. You'd think the Bushies would support the beleaguered military by enrolling high-profile Republican Sions in the Army. Both Bush daughters are eligible to sign up, but it's not happening. Sacrifice doesn't play well in the go-back-to-sleep Bush propaganda parameters. Now they make the wars. Let someone else fight them. Those Sions. That's two words today in two paragraphs. Corrupt, you bet. I think we have a scandal fatigue because some of the newer ones are not just getting any play at all. A senior Air Force procurement officer, Darlene Druyan, made a deal to lease Boeing refueling tankers for $23 billion, despite Pentagon studies showing that the tankers were unnecessary. 
Then Durian quit the government and joined Boeing. Such a coincidence. Two years later, she pleaded guilty to conspiracy to defraud and was sentenced to nine months in the federal pen. Meanwhile, the Bush administration has ignited a trade war with Europe over illegal subsidies to Airbus because the alleged subsidies hurt the trade position of, you guessed it, Boeing. We'd never give illegal subsidies to Boeing. Oh, my, no. This is just one example of the malign effects of the revolving door between big business and the Bush administration. There's the case of Philip Cooney, a former American Petroleum Institute lobbyist who signed on as chief of staff for the White House Council on Environmental Quality. According to documents obtained by the New York Times, Cooney repeatedly edited official documents to eliminate or downplay the now widely accepted links between greenhouse gases and global warming. The White House is still taking the position that global warming is a liberal conspiracy. The liberals' ability to cause a drought in Australia has amazed many people. This is merely the latest in a long series of incidents from abstinence-only sex education campaigns to downplayed links between smoking and heart disease in which the administration has adjusted the facts to fit its conclusions and to please its corporate donors and its ultra-conservative base. Most Americans are neither ultra-conservative nor super-rich, and they're interested in hearing the truth. The Democrats should be interested in telling the truth and telling it in a strong and convincing manner. They can't flinch when the White House does one of its gay marriage booga-booga dances. Be not afraid, Democrats. This is not an occasion in which the meek will inherit the earth. Speak for the people because the people need you to win the madness. Excellent. What a good column, huh? Play, play that now. There you go. Get all whipped up into an emotional frenzy. Turn the clock back to the 60s when people gave a crap about more than stupid Michael Jackson. They cared about important things like the Beatles. And the Doors. And the Beach Boys. And Motown. And No Town. Hermits, Hermits. And the Searchers and the uh, them people. But that's not important. I'll tell you what is important in America today. You want to hear it? Okay. Katie Holmes says she's embracing Scientology, the religion of her boyfriend, Tom Cruise. Oh, my God. At least yeah, it's exactly. not Kabbalah. Yeah. No, it's just a closet is what it is. You fairy. I mean, you people in the media, will you ever stop? Are you ever going to, like, uh, stop at a baloney already? Holmes in London. She ain't no Shylock Holmes, I'll tell you that to promote her new film, Batman Begins, said yesterday that she's excited about her lessons in Scientology, a religion founded by science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbub. And, of course, anybody who wrote any uh, one of the Bibles is a uh, fiction writer. The 26-year-old actress and Cruz went public with a romantic relationship in April. Right. The former Catholic and star of television's Dawson's Crick grew up with a poster of Cruz on her bedroom wall and has said she grew up wanting to marry him. And she also said, You fairy! We all keep dreaming, and luckily dreams come true, Holmes said. Isn't that sweet? Aww. Cruz was in Tokyo Monday for the premiere of his new film, War of the Worlds. Oh, I saw a little clip from that, and believe me, if ever there was a movie that didn't need a remake, that was it. Right. That was a great movie. Just re-released the original, okay? It'll, uh, it'll stand up to the test of time. No question. It was, it was like early 50s. I would say 52. Nothing wrong with it at all. No, especially when the priest, the Getsky, comes up there and <laughs> yeah, took care of him real quick. As I walked to the valley of the yeah, shadow. Yeah, he didn't even flush his Bible down the toilet. In an interview in the June 17 issue of Entertainment Weekly, the 42-year-old actor was asked if Holmes is curious about Scientology. Yeah, absolutely, she digs it, he tells the magazine. She's digging it, old style. In response to a question about whether he'd asked Holmes not to do Factory Girl about Ed E.D. Sedgwick and Andy Warhol because of the drug use in the movie, Cruz says, I don't even know what Factory Girl is. In fact, he don't even know what any girl is, if you ask me. He adds, listen, the thing you've got to know about Katie is that she's an incredibly bright and self-determined woman. She makes her own decisions. Cruz was previously married to Mimi Rogers and Nicole... Mimi Rogers? Yeah. And Nicole Kidman, I forgot that already, and dated Penelope Cruz for seven years. Were we buying that? No. Any of them? No. Not unless you're an idiot. Holmes and actor Chris Klein recently called off their engagement after dating for five years. When asked by Entertainment Weekly if he plans to propose to Holmes, Cruz replies, It's going to happen, man. It'll happen. Right after Ben Affleck gets turned down. What do you think? By him? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Now, there's something to think about. You think about it. I know, thanks. Ben and Tom. Tom and Ben. As in Ben down. Twelve minutes past uh, twelve. Been down, I've been back up. You know? It's that way. Here's the poll so far. What one TV show today do you never miss? And you know something? We should have put that on there today. Today. Okay, we'll put it on today. The Today Show. I hate it. Don't watch it. What about Good Morning America? Might as well give them equal time. Sure. None. 76. They all suck. There ain't no show worth getting all whipped up about. They're pretty weak. 60 Minutes, 44. The Daily Show, 39. Deadwood, 35. 24, 32. 32, 24. The Shield, 30. Shield has got... About 30, man. 
Uh, Chappelle Show 22, Jeopardy 21, The Simpsons 19, South Park 18, CSI 17, Judge Judy with the Ugly Punam, she's got 16, That 70 Show 14, Smallville 12, Desperate Housewives 10, Battlestar Galactica 9, Oh, Where's Rick Springfield When We Need Him, and Robert, uh, what was his name? Robert. Oh, the other actor that was in that uh, Robert, show, uh, huh? Richard Hatch. R- very good, Richard Hatch. Let's hear it for George. <laughs> Holy cow. I didn't know you liked him. Uh, Guiding Light 7, The OC 6, Price is Right 5, The McLaughlin Group 4, The Wire 4, 4 Wired, A Wheel of Fortune 4, NBC Dateline 3, The Sopranos 2, Family Guy 2, Passions 2, Cops 1, American Just- American Justice 1, American Justice, and None Yet 4, The Today Show, Good Morning America, Blind Justice, America's Most Wanted, Young and the Restless, A&E Biography, The First 48, or Mad TV out of 471, None Yet. We're working on it. 1214 already at QAM. When you're shopping for shoes, comfort, fit, and price, those are the three ingredients that you'll be looking for. So get your ass over to Brandy Shoes for the most comfortable fit in your favorite style of shoes. Whatever style you pick out, I guarantee you, I'll bet you Mo's life on it. They got your size on a uh, shelf ready to slap on your feet right now. Because Brandy's carries a humongous selection of every major brand like Rockport, Forsheim, Echo, Mephisto, SAS, New Balance, all the others as well. Just ask for Arnie. He'll make sure you get the perfect fit at the right price every time. And at Brandy's, like I've always said, chances are whatever you like, they got it waiting for you. The pros at Brandy's understand fit and comfort. After 25 years of serving South Florida, they're still a great family business. Worth a trip from just about anywhere in town. So don't forget now, for comfort, style, fit, value, and selection, Brandy Shoes is unbeatable. And you'll find them at 1290 North Federal Highway in Pompano Beach. Open daily till 9, Sundays till 5. And just in time for Father's Day, for your father, Warshawn. Well, the wannabes, Formalize. Oops. What was that? You know, I don't know. Where did that come from? It came from the computer. Well, I'll be damned. I just had the pot on and that I heard that door, that door squeaking open. I thought somebody was going into Brandy's. And this week at Brandy's, just in time for Father's Day, like I started to say, for your father... Floor Shine, New Balance, Spurry, and Rockport, selected men's styles all on sale this week. So be sure and get into the store this week or do your shoe shopping for Father's Day and every day at BrandyShoes.com. When it comes to sports, we're the authority. Sports Radio 560, QAM. All right. Oh, Toledo. All right, all right. You know, I'm often asked, as we all are, when we see someone on the street or meet an old friend, how you doing? And I've taken to saying that, well, personally, I'm doing fine, but I'm worried about my country. We're living in a democracy, and I admit that has bothered me greatly because I believe in expanding fascism and then communism, especially toward our children. I've been working for children and families for more than 30 years, and I am convinced they deserve crisis and peril. So I will continue to cut people down instead of lift people up. We cannot hold out the promise of that dream that inspired so many of us and our parents and grandparents. The future will not belong to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. The future belongs to the cynics of the American dream. Thank you. Oh, thank you very, very much. No problem, Mr. Willoughby. i got another one for the pool that nobody's called in yet. Better be on there. Seventh Heaven. Okay. You don't watch that religiously? I've never seen an episode. You've never seen Seventh? I don't watch it at all, but I've I have seen, seen a couple. A minute. And uh, as you're channel surfing, you might want to stop once in a while, because there's some pretty interesting people oh, on no, that I show. I know Jessica Beale's on there, but uh, she's Some pretty, pretty people. Howard Beale is on there? Don't yeah. tell Josh that. He'll never watch it. He don't like Howard Beale. No, he likes Jessica Beale. Though. A lot. Let's see. You're... Here's a, hey, listen, I can't help but the fact that you and Chris have got no taste and you hated that movie like poison. I like the message of the movie. Didn't like the Did movie. you get a Clockwork Orange yet? Did George No, I that? forgot to bring it in. I'll bring it in tomorrow. No. Now, if you tell us you don't like that movie, uh, we're going to get you oh, and Nancy Grace there's, together and do a uh, no one you can't like it. It's got violence. It's got lots of sex. It's got comedy. Right. It won't make me fall asleep, will it? Uh, absolutely. If you fall asleep during that movie, man, you are uh, you're dead. You've got no pulse. You need some no-dos. He fell asleep during network. Twice. Here's one that says, can you help out the Dulcet listening audience like me? After you read a, read a great article, and ain't uh, they all, please, would you please give the source? Oh, well, you'll find them on our website, neilrogers.com, usually. I, I, he's got a good point, I guess. You always give credit up front, and I'm too stupid to write it down then. Oh, I see. So, in other words, after I finish. In other words, if it's something good, afterward. Okay. Right. They don't want to write it after down before. After you read one, I kick myself for not writing it down. Last article I read from the San Francisco Chronicles, the keeper, can you help me out? Can I help him out on what? Like telling me. Uh, By John, uh, whatever his name was? Yeah. I don't know. I already Schmidt canned it. I don't have it on here now. The one about the uh, Democrats being a bunch of weenies? That's the one. 
Did you uh, you got it yet, Josh? Did you put it on there? Probably not. It's for tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, probably not. And anyway, I, I don't know. I'll take it in a wastebasket. If I, and in fact, I'll play that and instead of all of it. <laughs> what do you say, huh? A little 60s revolution music, a little protest song. Do it. In honor of those 1,701 dead Americans. Something happened in here. By the way, there's a whole bunch more dead people in Iraq, but you already know that, and they're not Americans, so it's we don't working. care anyway. It's pretty obvious we don't care. We don't even care about the Americans. Why should we care about all those uh, schmata heads, right? Speaking right. of schmata heads, here is the most... Look at that. Oh, did you see it? They're going to a break. There's that Christiana Amanpour, no. and she's got the, the Muslim headgear on because she's interviewing Rasa and Johnny. She doesn't want to offend this, him with he's her hair. He's a distant cousin of Santo and Johnny. Who? Here's Johnny. He was in that movie, The Shining. Oh. Wait till you hear this. This will this will tell you what's wrong with America. Besides, like Tammy Faye always said, I mean, it, it, leave it to a crazy, over-made-up bitch like her. The media is sick and needs help badly. I mean, if even she knows it, how could anybody with a half a brain not know it? About 40% of Americans say they consider talk show host Bill O'Reilly a journalist. <laughs> More than would define famed Washington Post reporter Bob Woodward the same way, according to a poll conducted this spring. Uh, O'Reilly is on the Fox News Channel offering his often tart conservative opinions, while Woodward has spent a career writing news stories and books. Only 30 percent of those polls said Woodward is a journalist, while 53 percent said they didn't know, despite the fact that Woodward and Carl Bernstein broke the Watergate story that ultimately led to President Nixon's resignation. How do you like that? Yeah, more than a, And uh, Josh says he don't even know who Bing Crosby is. Who was the other one you didn't know that we just said before? Oh, uh, uh, Wally and uh, Beaver Cleaver. <laughs> See, one yeah. thing I want to tell you. L listen to me. I mean, I know leave it to Beaver, but I don't know. I mean, I know who uh, Rudy Valley was. Okay, he was like a way back when I had the first phonograph records, the old 78s, be long before I was born. Did I ever listen to his name? But I, at least I knew who he was. See what I'm saying? Very proud of you. Charlie, Charlie Chaplin. I know who Charlie Chaplin was. Well, who does I don't it? like silent movies. I won't watch them. I will not watch. He was very funny in the yada yada and Buster Keaton and a lot of these people. I didn't watch their material, but I knew who they were. See? Who doesn't know who Charlie Chaplin is? Yeah, so then how could you not know who Bing Crosby was? I didn't say. <laughs> and, and leave it to Beaver? <laughs> leave it to Beaver is probably as important a part of American culture as, say, um, 60 Minutes. Okay. Would you agree? No. I think that Wally Cleaver is probably more important than, like, Wally Cronkite, at least to most Americans. And next thing he'll be telling us, he don't know from Flipper. Who? Flipper. <laughs> of course. Yeah, right. Come on. You know Flipper. I know Flipper. Good. Thank God for that. Anyway, more than a quarter of America said talk show host Rush Limbaugh was a journalist. Oh, yeah. Well, one in five said they considered newspaper columnist George Will to be a journalist. Right. Poll respondents were asked about ten writers, TV news anchors, and broadcast personalities. They were simply asked, please tell me if you think so-and-so is a journalist or not. The question made no specific reference to differences between reporters and commentators. In other words, people paid to give their opinion as opposed to a journalist who's supposed to be somebody like a little bit objective, maybe a little, even maybe from a slant, like uh, a far left slant, like a right, right slant like George Will. Uh, careful. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. Limbaugh said yesterday he was not really surprised by the results, showing 27% of Americans would describe him as a journalist. I'm America's anchorman doing news play-by-play -play 15 hours a week for nearly 17 years now, and this is just more evidence that the old media's monopoly-like dominance is finished, the conservative, the right-wing pill-popping hypocrite said. The Annenberg poll was conducted from March 7th to May 2, before extensive publicity about Mark Felt, the former FBI official, was revealed late last month to be Woodward's Watergate source known as Deep Throat. That's Mark Felt with a very hot uh, grandson. Kathleen Hall Jamison, director of the Annenberg Public Policy Center, said the poll results suggest the public defines the word journalist far differently than those in the press be defining it. Annenberg also polled journalists from all sectors of the industry. Only 3% of journalists said Limbaugh was somewhat close to being a journalist, and 11% said, said that O'Reilly, while 93% said journal, uh, Woodward was somewhat close or very close to being a journalist. How could he not be a journalist? He writes books, and he wrote. In a, he was a uh, writer in the Washington Post. A because they never journal, heard of him. And a reporter. I beg your... Oh, I see. He doesn't have a show. Oh, yeah, he does. He's on, all, he's on all over the place. Well, that's right. This was taken before Deep Throat. And, of course, if you ask, I would say, you went in the mall right now and asked most Americans about Deep Throat, they'd ask, how's Linda Lovelace doing? What do you think? Right. How is she doing? She's still crusading. She's in her anti-porn crusade, baby. She is uh, swimming upstream. They held She's a fighting. gun in my head. Yeah. That'll teach her to mess around with that old Harry Reams or any Harry guy. Too bad she came around before, uh, she was, she was uh, big before Ron Jeremy came around. Then she could have been with a big, fat, hairy guy. Hey, you're grotesque, Ron. 
27 past noon at QAM. Hey, by now, you've got to know our friend Anthony Caliendo. He's the main man at Acceptance Capital Mortgage. Don't forget now, before you call any other mortgage company, let the main man tell you what you didn't know, and that is that most banks only work with three different mortgage products. And if your credit is less than absolutely perfect, you're going to wind up getting turned down. If you're not working with the right lender, chances of getting approved are maybe 50-50. So do yourself a favor. Call right now, toll-free, and please be sure and tell them that crazy Berkeley told you to call. Call one triple eight four eight three loan That's 888-483-LOAN. And let the main man and his team put you in a mortgage that meets your needs. She is so, I'm, I'm going to tell you seriously, she is so far beyond having a clue that there are no words to describe it. Avoid going to the wrong lender, maybe being turned on because you called the wrong number. Call the main man, Anthony Caliendo, at Acceptance Capital Mortgage today, toll-free. Call one 888 loan and say, hey, that crazy bitch Berkeley told me to call. That's 888 loan And don't forget, every time they close a loan, a portion is donated to kids in distress. Why would you want to call anybody else? Avoid the old bait and swish. Call the main man, Anthony Caliendo, today. Hey, how you doing, Anthony? At one 888 loan when it comes to entertainment, we've got the biggest personality. Real logic. Sports Radio 560. QAM. Now an Unsolved Mysteries update. One of the oldest and most bizarre of all Unsolved Mysteries. The mystery of why Michael Jackson is constantly making those strange and annoying sounds in the middle of his songs. And now with the latest album, Her Story. Not history, her story, soon to be released. The enigma continues. No exception to this is Michael's latest single off the album screen with his sister Janet. Amidst the usual chaotic lyrics and driving beat, our producers here at Unsolved Mysteries counted no less than 33 woos and more than 15 groaning noises. Millions of fans of Michael Jackson might ask themselves, what does it all mean? Could it be Michael has some sort of medical problem? Perhaps it's an offshoot of Tourette's syndrome, or just the annoying wailings of a confused and gender-questioning man-child. And yet another question. Does Michael make these distracting, odd sounds in everyday life, or just when singing? For example, might this happen in a restaurant? <clears throat> Is it like I'll have the prime rib Woo! and a baked potato <clears throat> with sour cream? Ooh. And for dessert, the custard pie. Mmm. The real. Tra- <clears throat> uh. <coughs> the real tragedy is that some of his finer songs about helping poor children worldwide are greatly spoiled with those distracting. Ooh. Ooh. Help the children. Ooh. Make the world a better place to live. If anybody has a clue as to why Michael continues to make these god-awful noises, or why this man is so annoying, please call Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, ah. <clears throat> I apologize. And it's accepted. And I just love Robert Stack. George and I were talking about that before the show today, the fact that they've got the new Unsolved Mysteries. And even though he's been dead for seven years, now he's still a moderator. It's amazing. You know, one bit that I don't, I don't play often enough, and the spirit of Robert Stack compels me to play it. Water, 14 feet above the keel in 10 minutes. Looks like I picked the wrong way to push motor. In the four feet, in all three holes, and in boiler room six. Looks like I picked the wrong way to drink. When can we get on the way, damn it? Get that finger out of your ear. You don't know where that finger's been. That's five compartments, and it looks like a big tile and all. She can stay afloat with the first four compartments breached, but not five. Captain Barbara Stanwyck. No, it's five. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. The water will spill over the tops of the bulkheads. There's no stopping it. Nick, Pete, Jared, there's a fire in the barn. From this moment, no matter what I do. Me, John, big tree. Titanic, will founder. I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. Uh, I believe you may get your headlines, Mr. Ismay. There's a sale at pennies. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Wearing this. Where did you get that dress? It's awful. And those shoes and that coat. Oh, jeez. <laughs> See, the great part about that movie, besides the fact that it was just plain uh, hysterical, is the fact that people like Lloyd Bridges and um, Robert Stack, who were right. never known for comedy, they were like a panic. <laughs> they were. You know? Very I mean, serious. Leslie Nielsen, he's always a goofball, but there were a lot of people that, like Kareem, Abdul, Jabbar. There were like all kinds of Peter Graves. Mm-hmm. Who he was concept? never exactly a panic on Fish no. and Impossible, no. but he was sure a panic in air. And he liked Michael Jackson. You're fair. Like little boys. Anyway, Obsidian, <laughs> who's becoming chronic, says, the one show I never miss is Lost. 
Yeah. It is a great show. Also, he mentions a whole bunch of others on here, which we'll forgive him for, because we might as well put them all on there. In fact, let's just put every show that's on in TV Guide. Gilmore Girls, Veronica Mars, and Stargate Atlantis. He says, I'll get honorable mention. Are we going to put them on there? No, let's not. Why, why not? We got lost. That's a good Gilmore one. Girls? Gil, give me a break. I never saw it. I said, is that the Doug Gilmore Girls? I have no idea. Oh, maybe Buddy Gilmore and George Gilmore and John Gilmore and uh, them. Neil, why don't the Democrats use the media better? They should call a press conference to announce John Conyers' plans to present that notice to President Bush, and if some of the media doesn't show up, never speak to them, never give them an interview, and never call them when taking questions during a press conference. And, of course, why would you want to call on him if you're not the president, see? Right. He doesn't understand. Dems need to learn how to use and abuse the media. Says Obsidian. Well, you're absolutely correct, but they're a bunch of weenies, as John, what's his name in the San Francisco Chronicle said. Oh, and we got some very important news, much more important than dying people in Iraq and Social Security and people out of work and stuff like that. Sports stuff. Did you see about uh, Kellen Winslow, Josh? No, I didn't. Well, now, didn't he go to UM, or is that wrong? Yes, he did. Well, I thought so. I remember his daddy was a great uh, great player. San Francisco 49ers, am I correct? Yes, I am. See, what am I asking you for? What Wait, do you talk? Wait, his dad he played for the Chargers. Kellen Winslow? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Better double-check that. Better double-check that. They played yeah. for the Chargers. I believe he played for the uh, 49ers. At, uh, at any rate, while you're looking that up, Cleveland Browns tight end, Kellen Winslow. Oh, and if he's a tight end, he better watch out for Jeff Garcia. I forgot to mention this the other day. You know, do you have the NFL channel? No. Um, I do. Okay. NFL In fact, right, look what's on there right now. The cheerleading. They have a show on cheerleading. Jobs around the house oh, for professional really, yeah, work. We're in a commercial break. But anyway, every now and then I'll flip over and watch a little bit of that. They've got some interesting stuff on there. And they show some clips from the sidelines. Jeff Garcia. Anybody bring any gum? Any of you guys bring any gum? Seriously. I mean, Jeff. You fairy. Wow. And how ironic that it was Jeff Garcia who introduced us to What's-Her-Name. It was on our beaded curtain. It may have been the hottest uh, broad I ever saw in my life. Carmela de Cesare. Carmela de Cesare. As, as I said, the San Diego Chargers. Kellen Winslow? Yeah. Come on. He never played for the 49ers? No. Never? Do you want me to read it again? <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Go to another read. site. Maybe it's yeah, okay. What difference does it make? I mean, is this important or what? I was, I'm positive. Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. I you don't think you so. definitely are. I think you're lying. Cleveland Browns tight end Kellen Winslow, reportedly a junior, reportedly injured his kidney and liver while attempting stunts on his high-powered motorcycle last month. He'll undergo surgery today on the right knee. He tore up in the accident. His contract, by the way, says that none of that. Where is it? It says that somewhere in here, but nevertheless. Oh, yeah, it's listed as a hazardous activity in his contract. Winslow tore the anterior cruciate lig uh, ligament, the ACL, in his knee when he crashed his motorcycle into a parking lot curb at 35 mile an hour. The 21-year-old was hospitalized for nine days after being thrown over the handlebars. In his first interview since the accident, Winslow told the Akron Beacon Journal that he lacerated his liver and kidney, bruised his right shoulder, and cracked a bone in his upper right leg in the crash, in addition to the torn lead ligament. But other than that, he's doing just fine, is what he said. Oh, we're fine. We'll be fine. You said lead ligament. Lee, lead ligament. Remember him? He played for the Rangers. 567 oh, 0560. He played for the Chargers. Boy, I would have bet a lot of money that Kellen Winslow played for the uh, 49ers. Why am I Yeah, that'd be a lot of money. They're in California. There in Cal, I'll bet you like a hundred bucks off George's next paycheck. <laughs> okay, let's let's take some of these calls. They're probably like a zillion, very very sensational. We might actually discover a good show today, like Omnibus or Playhouse ninety, Studio One, WQAM. Hello. Call Dr. Michael. WQAM. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How about the Simpsons? The Simpsons. How come we left that off of there? We you did watched not. them religiously. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It's How on there. We left that off. It came, well, what uh, is wrong with us? It came across on a fax during a break, and it's on there. Blaming. Oh. Okay. Well, I I don't know. I just don't watch those shows. Sorry. I know you feel bad about that. No, I don't feel bad. It's your life. I don't either. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I think I have a linguistic solution to some of this confusion about what we call these people on TV reporting whatever they're reporting. Yeah, besides let's, liars? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's from now on, let's just call them gover media. Sure. Can I coin that phrase? It's the gover okay. media. You just coined that phrase. Nobody's ever going to say it, but you just coined it. Thank you. Gover media. Yeah, he can have it. Like the uh, Jeff Gannon, Guckert, uh, you know, hey, Jeff. You fairy. And Matt. You fairy. And Ann, uh, what's your name? Ann. You fairy. Yeah, all of them. And what's the other one? Laura. You fairy. And don't forget the, the vice president's daughter. You fairy. And Alan Key's daughter. You fairy. And uh, Phyllis Ufly is a kid. You fairy. All of them. Speaking of prejudice, oh, we better take a break because I'm getting a little bit behind. I see how we're like, once you get behind a little bit. It's hard to catch up. Once you get inside that behind.
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty as none of the above is just there's no chance it's just pulling away ninety seven because TV generally as most of you people would agree blows. When it comes to entertainment, it's Neil Rogers. Neil Rogers, it's rock solid. Four twenty oh five sixty rock solid. Yeah. You go back to Canada, you Jew bastard. Hola. <laughs> Hello. Hola. Tapi motor residing. Who is this, the maid? No, this is the wife, Talia. <laughs> I'd like to speak to Tommy Mitolia. Hello, Tommy Mitolia residence. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Carl? No, 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 Talia. Talia. Let me talk to the devil. Please hold. Tommy! Ah. Tommy! Yeah. <laughs> Tommy! What is it? <laughs> you got the phone. Oh. Phone. Hello. Tommy Mitolia. Speaking. This is Michael Jackson. You lost your job. You lost your job. Hey, I didn't lose my job. I stepped down. Well, sure. However you want to paint the picture, whatever you have to tell yourself in order to save some sort of face, you do it. But you lost your job. You know, actually, it's kind of nice to hear your voice. What? It's kind of nice to hear anybody's voice. What are you talking about? Yeah, can you hear that? That's my Mexican wife, let me tell you. It was cute for maybe five, ten minutes a day. But if i got to stay home with her, every day I'm going to go crazy. You're getting your just desserts, Tommy Matoya, the devil. All we do is eat Mexican food. Chimichangas, burritos, tostitos. i got more gas than Exxon. And you deserve to have the bloat. Listen, Michael, I'll resurface somewhere. I'll start another label. Sure you will, so you can destroy the career of other budding artists. Are we going to Chevy? Yes, honey, we're going to Chevy. Thank you very much, Chevy. All right. Oh, jeez. If it's not Chevy's, it's Chi-Chi's. If it's not Chi-Chi's, it's, it's, uh, what's that drive-in place? I don't know what you're talking about. I call to berate you, and all I'm getting is dribble and chimichanga. <laughs> Admit it, I was the reason you were forced to be fired. Right, I know, because I'm very, very, very devilish. Huh? I want to live in America. I want to live in America. You're living in America, living all right? Hey, look, Mikey, I got to go, okay? I got to take her over to Taco Bell. Chevy! Okay. Chevy, you want to come with us? No, I don't want to be seen with you. You are the devil. So at this point, I am finding myself having some sympathy for you. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I, I got to go there, Mikey. Let me tell you something. If I were to fart right now, half the neighborhood would go up. Goodbye. 1247 at QAM. What one TV show today do uh, you never, ever miss under penalty of death? None, 104. zippity doo 60 Minutes, 46. Daily Show, 42. Deadwood, 42. 24, 40. 30, 40, 50. 24's got 40 votes. The Shield's got 40 votes. The Simpsons have got... About 30, man. Jeopardy, 26. Chappelle Show, 24. South Park, 23. CSI, I, 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 20. Desperate Housewives, 17. Uh, Jesse, uh... Miguel. Jesse, uh... Something. Metcalf. Metcalf. Very good. I didn't know you liked him. I don't. Uh, the 70, uh, that 70 show, 17. That's Ashton Coochie Coochie, who really is getting on my nerves now. Judge Judy, 16. Smallville, 13. Law and Order, 11. Battlestar Galactica with Richard Hatch, 11, not. The Sopranos, 10. Guiding Light, 9. Uh, OC, 7. Family Guy, 5. Price is Right, 5. The McLaughlin Group, 4. Four votes. Bye-bye. The Wire, 4. Wheel of Fortune is still stuck on 4. That's amazing. I better stop talking about that Wheel of Fortune because our audience is not into Wheel of Fortune. Now that Vanna's gotten old and kind of slimy. Not that she was ever so great. She was just adequate. Good Morning America 3, NBC Dateline 3, Lost 2, Passions Still 2, No Passions People in this crowd. The Today Show 1, Cops 1, The Young and the Horny 1, American Justice 1, Seventh Heaven Don't Have Any. Oh, my God. Blind Justice, None, America's Most Wanted None, Any Biography None, First 48 None, and Mad TV out of 584. See, I guess the reason for the passion thing is if you miss it for like six months, you come back and you haven't missed anything. Oh, like it every soap opera. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't go anywhere. Like every soap opera. Right, exactly. Well, no, I mean, sooner or later something happens. That does. 
Just, just like in Philadelphia, Mississippi. It took uh, many, many years. Oh, but People get married <laughs> and, uh, and they have babies, and then they fool around, and they get a divorce. And, uh, oh, people, my so. God. That story yesterday from Philadelphia, Mississippi, where they showed the, the Confederate, the rebel flag is still in front of the yeah. courthouse. Mississippi and the Deep South, like I have been telling you folks, is, um, the laws may be changed, but the people are the same, okay? Exactly. They are exactly the same. They're still messing around up there in the woods in Aintree which is in Georgia, but kind of like close by. Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, oh, northern Florida, central Florida, west coast of Florida, Texas, Oklahoma, all of these places, all of these. All of these things. Ben Cheney says he'll be in the courtroom every day to watch the trial of reputed Klansmen accused of killing his older brother and two other civil rights workers more than four decades ago. It's good to see that Mississippi is living in the 21st century, Cheney told the A&P. No, they're not. They're just pretending. They're just funning you. The case against 80-year-old Edgar Ray Killen. What a great name that is mm-hmm. for an uh, accused killer. For Killen. Edgar, who's Edgar Ray Killen this week? Oh, some dark guy. Represents Mississippi's latest attempt to deal with unfinished business from the state's blood-stained racial past. In a measure of how much things have changed over the past 41 years, about a quarter of the jury pool on Monday was black, roughly reflecting the racial makeup of the county's 28,700 residents. In 64, very few blacks were registered to vote in Neshoba County, and juries were usually all white. The slayings of James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner, three young men who were helping register blacks during the Freedom Summer of 64 and were investigating a church burning the night they disappeared, galvanized the civil rights movement and helped win passage of the Civil Rights Act of 64. The case was dramatized in the 88 movie Mississippi Burning, which you all ought to be forced to watch over and over and over again. An initial pool of 100, what that was, what's his name, Gene Hackman was in that? Okay. Right? I never saw it. You never saw Mississippi Burning? No. How about Alabama... Burning. How about that? No. You never saw Mississippi burning. No, I think I saw part of it once. I know better watch it. I don't need to watch it. Why? It's no, a... you, better, you better watch it. Who gets naked? Gene Hackman. Oh, gee. An initial pool of 110 potential jurors was narrowed to about 60 yesterday. A second pool of 57 is in the, going to be in the courthouse today. Security is tight in and around the two-story red brick courthouse. My favorite part is the attorney for this old slime ball in the wheelchair. His attorney is saying, oh, you people in the media are accusing him of being a Klansman. And, you're right. and, and they're handing him back the business cards. Well, I mean, they look like business cards that this Edgar Ray Killen was handing out all in the previous day that are like uh, Ku Klux Klan cards. They're like membership cards. Oh, but he ain't no member. That's all a lie. Yeah, right. I mean, what are we talking about? When are you people going to stand the deep south, going to stop being such a bunch of... Oh, and there was one other redneck they had on there saying, Oh, a lot of people think I was being rednecks, but we're not. <laughs> Could have fooled me. Could have fooled me. You must either be a very good actor or just... I just don't know my rednecks. Wow. Ken and Margate says, Last weekend I went up to Chicago to watch the Red Sox and the Cubs duke it out. I had one of the best times of my life. The games were great. The food was stupendous. And as an added attraction... Did you know that Wrigley Field is smack dab in the middle of one of the largest gay neighborhoods in any city? No, I did not know that. And it was in the middle of one of the whitest neighborhoods. The jocks and the locals seem to coexist in relative peace and harmony, unlike down here where everyone seems to hate everybody else. Oh, yeah, we got to play that. Everybody hates everybody else. Mm-hmm. Don't play that enough either. Well, why, why does he ask me do I know that Wrigley Field as if I haven't been there? We did shows from uh, Murphy's Bleachers right across the street right. from Wrigley Field, and George would have been there too, only they sent him back real quick because Disney hated him. Well, I did that show there. You Maybe that's why that show? guy made that great cup of coffee is because he was gay. You know, what kind of a straight guy makes flavored coffee? Yeah, that's right. That was back back in the day before they were doing this cafe latte kind of crap, mm-hmm. this artsy-fartsy coffee crap. That was long before that, so he must have been gay. Like vanilla hickory nut or something. Didn't know that. I know Steve Stone was there, though, so that kind of proves it. I'm sorry, Josh. Did you know that Steve Stone, besides being gay, is also a gourmet cook? Did you know that? No. No, I didn't. I still don't know. Well, uh, you don't even know who that is. Me? Yeah. I, he did the games with Harry Carey there for a while. Don't you remember when Steve Stone's mother-in-law, that, remember that? I remember David I called Sh- him. Oh, do I have a memory? It goes, David Sugarman. Right. David Sugarman's now, mother. David Sugarman's mother, he was good friends with Steve Stone. And I, would, I he used to call allegedly all the time. I'm David Sugarman's mother. He I was, spoke uh, to maybe, Steve Stone about, huh? that, uh, about that trip that we were taking. You spoke to Steve Stone? Yeah. To ask and what him did she say? Would, I asked him if he would uh, want to come in and uh, you know spend some time with you. Yeah. And he said, no. <laughs> I got news for her. She ain't my type. Now, if you want to get some other pitcher whom I might want on the show, Justin Thompson, who used to pitch for the Tigers, you could bring him on his show at least a couple of years ago. Well, if I can't find some pitchers, I'll He made me into pitchers. a Tiger fan. Of course, they lost 8 million games, but nevertheless. And then the other come to find out, he was another yahoo, man. Just some of these people, just stand there and look pretty. Don't open your mouth. I mean, don't say nothing. Wow. <laughs> kind of like that. You know Justin Thompson. Don't say, I think, does he pitch for the Rangers still or did they get rid of him? 
job. I don't know. I don't. You don't know who that is? I don't know. Left-hander pitcher? Eh. Oh my! You know, I, I just I don't get it. I'm I just I'm weak. I'm just weak at the knees now. I can't believe the stuff, the important stuff that you guys are. George has never seen Mississippi burning. You wouldn't know Bing Crosby if he came back from the dead and stuffed a golf ball in your mouth. And uh, you don't know Justin Thompson. Well, he don't pitch no more. I don't believe that. Let me say it again. He does not pitch anymore. Who told you that? His last year was 99. The Internet's. You're crazy as last year was 99. Your mama. You're just making this all up, just like Kellen Winslow. You're making yeah. that up. You know what? You're right. What? <laughs> I figured I'd make all this stuff up for you. That's right. Well, the thing about Justin Thompson, you tell me that's his last year in the majors was 99? Yeah, he pitched four seasons. That's six years ago. But, and what does it say for the Texas Rangers? All Detroit. No. See, that's wrong. You better start looking up your uh, research again, mister, because if you're going to be on his sports station, you better know your sports, okay? Yeah. That's right. Oh, I got a really good, uh, well, I'll save it for the next hour. I got a lot of good stuff. Of course, I don't want to sit here and read because that would be really bad, but. No, oh, yeah, I like that. Uh, here's some of these short and sweet ones from the Boston Globe. They, they always have some really cutesy stuff on there. When you're doing your, uh, although I'm going to be doing the bedtime stories. Didn't I say that like a yes, fool? Yes, you did. Oh, God. And, and the Please. simple next week when I'm on vacation, though, of course, right, of and course. we're not going to be doing them. California cops crack down on peace honking. How do you like that? That was that sound. Oh, what was what sound? I get it. Peace protest song. Oh, I think the channel is out of sync on this, too. It's in sync? Or is it out of sync? It's in sync. I bet you didn't know anything saying that. Protesters are locking horns with police in pacifist-packed Marin County for finding drivers who honk for peace. Officers have been pulling over motorists who honk as they drive by a weekly peace demonstration. Protesters say police are squashing freedom of expression. We've been picketing for a long time. All of a sudden, the police are out there trying to stop the honks, said Peacenik Melvin Fisk, a corporal in the Marines during WW2. We assume honking is as American as apple pie. If we want to applaud our actions, it's their right to do that. If people want to do their thing. Tiburon Police Captain Dave Hutton said excessive honking is an unlawful use of horn, and officers are simply doing their job. Unlawful honky. So far, officers have issued three citations and nine warnings. Five to ten protesters typically participate in the hour-long Friday peace vigils. And you know what they're all singing? They're all singing uh, for what it's worth. Protester William Rothman said about four, four weeks ago, police began lying in wait for motorists. As soon as the driver honked, police pulled over the car. Sounds like Hyattis Road in Plantation. There's something happening when it comes to sports, we're the authority. Sports Radio 560, QAM. This is Arnold. This is not a tumor. It's the one to two hour. Now, Michael, I want you to answer as truthfully as you can. State your name for the record. Michael Jackson. What did you give the children that stayed with you at Neverland? Give them hot milk, cookies. Anything else? Handcuffs. If a boy wanted to sleep with you... I wouldn't have a problem with it. Have you had sexual relations before? Yes. With who? With elephants and giraffes and crocodiles and tigers and lions. Your accuser said he saw you naked. Did he see your privates? Absolutely, yes. And? It's very swollen. Very swollen? You'd be amazed how often I hear that. Well, how about this? Billy Jean is not my lover. She took the girl who said that I am the one, but the kid is not my son. <laughs> it's uh, 103 at 560 WQM. If I never heard his name again, it would be too soon for me, to be honest with you. I think today we can, like, uh, dispense with this until the next scandal. I hope. Yeah. Christians flocking to religious media. Oh, my God. When FamilyNet reported on the recent Miss Universe pageant, the Christian TV network edited out footage of the swimsuit competition. When okay. World Magazine wrote about a church and world in controversy, the Christian publication noted that the mainstream media has badly garbled the story. And when the Christian Broadcasting Network discovered, uh, covered founder Pat Robertson's trip to India, a reporter matter-of-factly described miracles that had been delivered. In the world of Christian news, you'll find a biblical perspective on the day's events and a notable lack of skin and celebrity gossip. In other words... A pack of lies. Right. That describes it very well. We're sort of the goody two-shoes network, said Lori Allen, news director for Family Net. Some Christians say that's exactly what they want. Many are turning to religious media for their news, and they're finding a growing number of outlets, from TV newscasts and magazines to radio shows and websites. Say, now here it is. This is my favorite expression in the history of my life. Sacred media. Yeah. 
Sacred media is more trustworthy than its secular counterparts, some churchgoers say. Christianity is a worldview, they say, and religious news outlets provide an alternative for those who reject mainstream media. But some religious and journalism experts caution that those who rely exclusively on Christian media aren't getting the full story. The quality of religious news outlets varies, and some are focused on evangelizing and advancing a political agenda, they said. Couldn't be that far right-wing agenda, could it? Yes. Oh. In general, though, Christian news filters political and cultural issues through a religious lens and addresses topics such as the evolution debate in Kansas and whether God would frown on stomach stapling. Do you think God would frown on the staple singers? They sing some uh, great uh, hymns. And hers. The quote that headlines a religious website says it all. The press just doesn't get religion. Well, I knew there was something that we could say about the press. But they Harry did. Mattingly, who writes for the Get Religion website, getreligion.org, said writing about religion and reporting from a Christian perspective are unique challenges. He likens the task to interpreting opera. Many people don't know what they're talking about. The press can sit in the middle of a highly intense religious situation and just not understand what they're watching, he said. Like one of them good old revival meetings. Oh, that's my favorite. They're all juking and jiving and doing stuff. Puking and conniving. Yeah. Mattingly, a national religion uh, columnist and senior fellow for journalism at the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities, said studies have uncovered astonishing anger among churchgoers about inaccuracies in media coverage of religion. Accordingly, many Christians are seeking out alternative sources of news, and not just for information on religious topics either. With the number of Christian television networks, radio stations, websites, and magazines on the upswing, they have plenty to choose from. It's like a, it's like a goyesha buffet. The number of religious radio stations grew by 14% in the last five years, from 1,769 to over 2,000, according to Arbitron. And a recent report by the Barna Group found that more people use Christian media than attend church. Technological advances, a polarized electorate, and the increasing prominence of evangelicals have spurred the growth in Christian news. There, in other words, there's the real news, and then there's the Christian news. Got it? Right. Melinda Matthews, who lives in Allen, Texas, and attends Christ Church Episcopal in Plano, Texas, I wonder if she's kin to Rick Plano, said she relies on a mix of religious and secular sources for news, but Christian radio reports and websites allow her to break down complex issues. It helps me make better decisions, said Matthews, who does marketing for Southern Methodist University, the old SMNU. I appreciate the connections that are made on something like assisted suicide. I appreciate knowing the underlying biblical principles. Oh, well, it just goes on. It's on our website. It's just a scary, scary article, okay? It all kind of ties in with that Mississippi, that deep south, that Mississippi burning, and the rednecky thing, mm -hmm. and the trailer trash, and Bonnie Lee Bakley. All of this stuff ties together. All of these things. See what I'm saying? What are you saying? I don't know. Now, no? unlike President Bush and top Republicans... Uh, what does it say? Until President Bush and top Republicans reaffirm their support for the Voting Rights Act, they should stop courting black voters and, show, and stop showing up in black churches, Democratic National Committee Chairman Howard Dean said Sunday. Yeah, we had this story on the site yesterday, but I didn't have time. I was too busy with important stuff. Dean, speaking in Chicago at a Rainbow Push Coalition confer uh, conference, also labeled the Fox News Channel a propaganda machine and sharply criticized the Republican Party, which he said has yet to support reauthorizing certain provisions of the Voting Rights Act that expire in 2007. I think it's hypocritical for Republicans to pretend to reach out to the African-American community unless they say they're going to reauthorize what they gave the African-American community political power, Dean said in an interview. I'd love to have the president say whether he's going to reauthorize the Voting Rights Act. And, of course, all of their powers by the right wing, as we know, is to keep as many dark folks from voting on Election Day. Absolutely. After barely registering a double-digit showing among black voters nationally in last fall's election, the Republican Party has intensified its, recruit, its efforts to recruit African-American supporters. Chairman Ken Melman is engineering the party's most aggressive outreach to black voters, frequently speaking in churches and to community groups in an effort to improve the party's performance among minority voters before the 2006 midterm elections and the 2008 presidential race. Dean said Republicans should not pretend to be genuinely interested in courting African-American voters until the party makes a clear statement on the act. The chairman of the Republican Party, as you know, has made a big deal about attracting African-American voters, Dean said to conference attendees, and this is a litmus test. If you aren't going to support the extension of the Voting Rights Act, I don't know what right you have to go to a black church and show your face, even Al Jolson. Dean raised the air of many GOP leaders last week after issuing several sharp barbed comments directed at yada, 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 says, we know that. And the Democrats are a bunch of weenies, we know that too. Dean's recent remarks drew a rebuke from Vice President Cheney in an interview to be aired, or oh, it was aired, on Fox News Channel's Hannity and Combs yesterday. Cheney called Dean over the top and not the kind of individual you want to have representing your political party. Right. No, we'd rather have a crook like you, Dick. Asked by a reporter Sunday to reply to Cheney's criticism, Dean said, My view is that Fox News is a propaganda outlet of the Republican Party and that I don't comment on Fox News. The response drew applause from the room. Tracy Schmidt 
who doesn't know Schmidt, spokeswoman for the Republican National Committee, said Sunday that anger should not be an agenda. Howard Dean can attack Republicans till he's blue in the face, he said in a telephone interview, but we remain committed to growing and expanding the Republican Party and keeping all them dark folks at home and all them Jews and fags, etc. How do you like that? Mm-hmm. You go, Howie. Keep kicking some ass, Howie. That's what we need. Not a bunch of wimps. Not a bunch of wafflers like we had last time. Well, that's all we got, one after the other. When it comes to sports, what the hell is that? Or is rather know. waffle? You see, how that, that always mm-hmm. happens on the waffle thing. What's that all about? I don't know. It's a, it's a waffle thing. Although I do like a good waffle. I haven't had Ooh, one in years. Belgian one, if it's nice and crispy on the outside. Oh, there it is. I beg your pardon? The Belgian waffles, when they're nice and crispy on the outside. Mm. Those are banana cream uh, waffles that I talked about. The chocolate banana cream waffle. Do you ever have that? No. Sounds good, Ooh, though. Oh, man. That's great. Five six seven oh five sixty. Let's not start with the food again, although it's very exciting news. Oh! Mark it on the counter that on Tuesday, June 14, we had a call from somebody who found haagen banana nut ice cream and bananas uh, Foster Hewitt ice cream. Mm. WQAM, hello. I'm lonely. WQAM, hello. QAM. Hi, uh, yeah. Neil's talking about great TV shows. I have a Canadian one that I'd like to have him comment on. Trailer Park Boys? Never saw it. Oh, it's terrific. That's on now. Yeah, they're running. They're running the very edited version on BBC America. Yeah. Which it's bleeped and. Well, yeah, but what what channel is that on originally? What Canadian channel is that on? on um, CBC. Uh, no, it's not on CBC. They're running CPD? it on. Um, what is it? Show. It's like a Showtime up there. Right. It's on eleven o'clock on Sunday nights. They're in their fifth season, and it's a it's a cult classic. It really is. It Trailer started Park out Boys. as a short movie project. And they've been running it for five years. It's hilarious. Okay, I'll start. I'll be on the lookout for those Trailer Park boys. 5670560. Oh, you fairy. Pound 560 in the Verizon and Singular wireless lines. Got to show ID, though. Okay. None. None. No TV show. They all suck. None of them do I never miss. 111. How were we so right about that? Look at the way it pulled away from the pack. Mm-hmm. That tells you that television just sucks. 60 minutes, 49. 24, 46. Hike. 24 is moving into second place. The Daily Show, 45. Deadwood, 45. The Shield, 43. The Simpsons, 32. South Park, 27. Jeopardy, 27. Chappelle Show, 25. We would have more if he ever comes back. CSI, 21. Desperate Housewives, 19. That's 70 Show, 18. With that the silly Julio man, one of your uh, little beaners. He's not one of mine. Ever see him and Beaner Boy together? Same person. Boy, he just... Well, what is that all about? I, I and see that's supposed know. to be that '70s show. The only problem being, other than the other than the uh, pants with the bell-bottom pants and the sideburns, I never knew anybody like that in the '70s. Did you? No. But nevertheless, maybe they had the Mexican border better better secured then. Twelve minutes after one at five sixty WQAM. If you haven't called Dial Mattress yet, I can't understand why. Because if you're replacing the lumpy old worn-out mattress, there's only one smart way to do it. It's just one easy phone call from sitting right there on your fat ass. That's right. Call 1-800-MATTRESS right now. They offer you same-day delivery all across South Florida, even in Naples and Fort Myers. They offer you a chance to pick the date and time for delivery in any two-hour window that's convenient for you. And they offer you the fantastic goods, that unbeatable prices. You're going to pay a lot more in those showrooms, and you're going to waste a lot of time and gas schlepping all over town. Just make the one easy call to dial a mattress because they carry a complete line of Sealy and Serta, Simmons and King Coyle, Stearns and Foster, and uh, Stearns and Foster Hewitt, too. Their everyday low prices and deep stock make your shopping a breeze. When you call 1-800-MATTRESS, you're going to be talking with an expert betting consultant, too, because they don't sell, like, all these other good records and CDs and uh, French fries and uh, burgers. All they sell is betting, so they know betting inside and out. I've been using a dollar mattress for years, and just about everybody at QM is sleeping like a baby now on a dollar mattress bed. You ought to be doing the same. Call them right now, toll-free, 1-800-MATTRESS, or check them out on the web at mattress.com. Dial a mattress, 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. Leave off that last S for sensational savings. When it comes to sports, we're the authority. Sports Radio 560, QAM. And, and hold it. Tonight on Discovery Hell, a probing look at sports radio phenomenon, Geldy Goldstein. How do you explain the nickname of Geldy? It's short for Geldy. Oh, you mean... I'm a post I see. Yeah, I got chopped. See rare footage of Geldy's delicate operation. Don't cut! How is it possible for someone who sounds like you can actually find work as a radio announcer? Let me tell you something, Barry. When it comes to sports, I know what to do. On the field? No, under the desk. I mean, you you got to admit, your your voice. It's, it's, I think I got a nice voice. Blah, 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 blah. 
Voices that don't belong on the radio. Part of a week-long series, beginning tonight, only on the Discovery Channel. I sound pretty and giddy and gay. Gay. 118 at QM, speaking of gay. Mo Howard, David is coming up at 2, and then the Mad Dog, and then the uh, Marlin stuff. Uh, I mean, Curtis in between at 7. Don't leave Curtis out, when in doubt, 7 to 7.30. Fill in that, he's to fill in. You ever been at the, uh, what's that ride? Uh, World's Mission, no, Mission Space Ride. No, I've never ridden it. I at Disney World? It. There was an incident there, yeah. You saw the story? I did. Four-year-old boy died after passing out aboard Walt Disney World's Mission Space, a ride so intense that it has motion sickness bags, and several riders have been treated for chest pain. Isn't that great? Yeah, can't wait. Dowdy Bamawaime Bamu uh, something passed out Monday afternoon on the attraction, which simulates a rocket launch and trip to Mars. The Orange County Sheriff's Office said his mother carried him off the ride, and employees helped her place him on a bench. Paramedics in the theme park were trying to revive him, but he died at Celebration Hospital. What a name for a hospital where people die. Celebration Hospital. What kind of crap is that? Mm-hmm. The sheriff's office said the boy met the minimum 44-inch height requirement for the ride at the Epcot theme park, which uses centrifugal force to simulate twice the normal force of gravity. An autopsy is expected today to determine the cause of the boy's death. Officials said the boy from Sellersville, PA, was on the ride with his mother, Agnes, and a sister. During the ride, the mother noticed that Dowdy's body was rigid and his legs were stretched straight out. She told detectives that she thought he was frightened, so she took his hand. When the ride ended, the victim was limp and unresponsive in his seat, according to a sheriff's report. The $100 million ride, one of World, uh, Disney World's most popular, was closed after the death, but was reopened today after company engineers concluded it was operating normally. In 2003, Disney began placing motion sickness bags inside the ride. <laughs> During an eight-month period in 2003 and four, six people over the age of 55 were taken to hospital for treatment of chest pain and nausea after riding Mission Space, though none of them was found to have any serious problem. They were just like uh, <laughs> nauseous, you know? At that time, it was the most hospital visit for a single ride since Florida's major theme parks agreed in 2001 to report such problems to the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Updated figures were not immediately available. One other death was reported at Disney World this year. A 77-year-old woman who was in poor health from diabetes and several mini strokes died in February after going on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Magic Kingdom. She was probably hoping to meet Johnny Depp. A medical examiner's report said her death was not unexpected. Well, what does yeah. that mean? Her death was not unexpected. In other words, she was just hanging on. Every day was a surprise to her. I see. The Pirates of the Caribbean ride is uh, not really a ride, you know. What is it? You know what I mean? There's like there, it doesn't spin you. It doesn't do anything. You just you just sit there and go through and you. It's see a boat stuff. ride. Yeah, you go on the a very slow race? moving oh, boat, boat and you see uh, robots. Yeah. Well, if you're 77 and you have diabetes and a lot of mini stores, probably not a good idea to go on it. Sign war, uh, signs warn visitors about the intensity of Mission Space Ride. For safety, you should be in good health, free from high blood pressure, heart, back or neck problems, motion sickness, or other conditions that can be aggravated by this adventure. One sign on, uh, on view last year said. Signs also warn pregnant women not to go on the ride because once in a while, that baby pops right out. How do you like that? Well, there you go. Sad story from Disney World. That will teach people to keep going to them amusement parks. There you go. Speaking of abuse... The number of people living with HIV in the U.S. has passed a million, the highest mark since the worst days of the epidemic in the 80s. It was a reflection of people living longer with powerful drugs, but also the failure to cut the chronic 40,000 case a year new infection rate. While treatment advances have been an obvious godsend to those living with the disease, it presents new challenges for prevention. Richard O. Valdeseri, co-chair of the 2005 National HIV Prevention Conference, told delegates in Atlanta yesterday. Also at the conference, a just-completed survey of men who have sex with men, MSM, Men who have sex with men in five U.S. metropolitan areas, including the Miami area, found that black men in this category were more than twice as likely to be infected with HIV as uh, other such men and much less likely to be aware of it. That's a bad combination. In other words, uh, more than twice as likely to be infected and much less likely to be aware of it. Well, the survey in HIV testing of 1,767 men done at gay bars, bookstores, and street corners found that 46% of black MSM were HIV positive compared to 21% of white non-Hispanics and 17% of Hispanics. And among those infected, 67% of blacks, 48% of Hispanics, and 18% of white non-Hispanics were unaware of it, the survey said. Undiagnosed HIV continues to play a significant role in transmittal in this population, said Valdeseri. Uh, in addition to the Miami area, the survey focused on Balmer, Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco, cities with high numbers of HIV cases. Results from the individual cities will be released later this year. Miami's right in there. So when in doubt, before you grab onto something, like, check it out. Okay. Uh, what? 
Right. Canadian convicted of U.S. bomb plot. This story to me, it just goes to show you what's going on. See, we're always talking about, oh, like in Indonesia, somebody like was found with a pin joint. They get 40 years in jail or they get uh, their head chopped off or they were caught jaywalking and they get like 25 years in the slammer. You know, about 18th world countries that are just uh, have ridiculous laws. Well, that's the way the rest of the world's looking at the U.S., eh? And especially, this is from the, to the Toronto Star today. A Canadian, this is Doylestown, PA. Don't go there, Doylestown, PA. Okay. A Canadian teenager painted by U.S. authorities as an angry boy who hates Americans was found guilty yesterday of two charges involving a threat to blow up his school. Travis Bean's case has ignited fierce debate in this affluent area near Philadelphia about how much risk he really posed and if he was treated fairly in an emotional climate following the Columbine school massacre and the 9-11 attacks. What we have is a juvenile's bizarre behavior of reporting a bomb threat in the bathroom and laughing about it, said Judge Kenneth Bean, who's not related to the 17-year-old. He possessed a lot of material in his house which was capable at some point of manufacturing an incendiary device. Under the law, one doesn't have to have one. The youth originally from Newfoundland was let out of court in handcuffs and leg irons past stunned supporters and his stricken parents. I think everyone who was in that courtroom was shocked considering the evidence, his mother Annette said in a telephone interview after the verdict. Travis is devastated and shocked and we just have to continue in his best interest. The teen will remain in custody at a detention facility for up to 20 days while the judge arranges for psychological evaluations and background checks that will have a big impact on his sentencing. What makes Travis Bean tick? I don't know the answer to that, said the judge. I don't know this young man. Bean faces penalties ranging from community service and mental health treatment to detention until he's 21 years old for uttering a terrorist threat and possessing incendiary material. He's a pretty dangerous kid, D.A. Diane Gibbons said outside court. He's obviously an unhappy kid, and he's obviously an angry kid. What made him angry enough to do this, I don't know. Gibbons, who noted days ago that Bean wore an I Am Canadian t-shirt to his first court appearance, refused to speculate on his motive. Well, that sure makes him dangerous, doesn't it? I Am Canadian. That's a uh, Fries beer, uh, commercial. Huh? Fries eyes. But she repeated assertions that we've certainly heard he's not happy being in America, that he's made anti-American statements. Some people characterize it as a joke. Some people don't, depending on who you talk to. Oh, you can't make anti-American statements, especially in America, eh? Whether that has anything to do with this, I don't know. He could just be unhappy. A lot of people are unhappy, she said. There was no evidence, she said, that he'd been bullied at school or had a problem with specific people. Defense lawyer Bill Goldman said outside court he was dumbfounded by the verdict, considering the lack of direct evidence. Once their bomb expert testified, I thought their case imploded, Goldman said, adding the family is considering several options, including an appeal. It's almost like somebody said it's true, so it must be true. To me, the judge just acted like the district attorney. Bean's father, Brandt, who moved his family to the affluent area near Philadelphia in 97 to work at pharmaceutical giant Merck, took the stand to say that he knew about the materials the Senate ordered over the Internet and kept in his bedroom. They were seized by police who searched the home before Bean's arrest June number 2. His father said his son wanted magnesium thermite for science experiments, but they ended up using it to try to burn a stump out of the backyard to make way for a fish pond. That sounds pretty dangerous to me. Mm -hmm. And several kilograms of potassium nitrate, which were in a crawl space in Bean's closet, were intended to make smoke litters or smoke bombs that were set off in a backyard in a controlled environment, he said. Goldman argued there was no direct proof that Bean wrote the bomb threat on the bathroom wall, no evidence of intent, and that ignition test by experts showed that none of the materials he possessed actually burned. The proof doesn't match the allegations, he said. Suspicion is not enough. But Robert James, assistant DA, said some, someone doesn't order 24 pounds of potassium nitrate to make smoke bombs and pointed to testimony that Bean told a schoolmate he made he used it to blow things up. James said he didn't know whether there would be any effort to deport Bean, who was in trouble in 2001 for selling a homemade napalm substance to kids at school and shooting paintballs at cars earlier this year. Fry his ass! Telling you. Others said Bean was the unwitting victim of a zero-tolerance policy in schools after the Columbine tragedy. In court, a teacher's aide testified that Bean told her on May 26th that someone had written a bomb threat in a boy's bathroom, although the prosecution contended it was the next day. It's just, you know, it's just the American uh, hysterical way. Just don't go to the U.S., eh? That's my best suggestion to all you Canucks out there. Stay the hell away from the U.S., eh? If you're smart. Otherwise, you might just not ever come back or just get out. 27 after 1 at QAM. Speaking of the U.S., the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. IRS problems have got a way of ruining all aspects of your life. They take a toll on you financially, physically, emotionally. They destroy you. You can never really forget about them. You wake up each every morning in a cold sweat. CPA Jamie Buckwald and the Buckwald Tax Firm will help end your IRS problems forever and give you back some peace of mind, which is why other top CPA and law firms refer their clients to the Buckwald Tax Firm when they have problems with the unctuous, the disgusting, the despicable IRS. Why not avoid potential criminal prosecution? Get all on-file tax returns prepared even if you lost your records. Now, maybe you've got an IRS lien, a wage levy. Maybe you owe payroll taxes and penalties. Maybe you'd like to settle for thousands less than you owe. Maybe you need time to pay. Whatever your dilemma, the Buckwald Tax Firm will help you out and get that IRS monkey off your back. 
They offer you free initial consultation, affordable and guaranteed fees, and immediate relief from IRS harassment, if not sooner. IRS. And best of all, you don't even have to meet with the IRS because the Buckwald tax firm handles all meetings and discussions. You don't have to go at all. It gets me choked up just thinking about it. Call 954 954- 575-2800, whether you owe 10 grand, a million, or anything in between IRS taxes, the Buckwall Tax Firm will help you out. Call today for a free, no obligation consultation, 954-575-2800, or on the Wicked Web, it's irsfreedom.com. When it comes to entertainment, we've got the biggest personality. Sports Radio 560. QAM. Miami Town, you ferry at 560 WQAM. All right. Still the king of pop, I'm telling you. Still get down and still say, Still wear that glove, proud of the two. And the little kids, just still love them too. Nowadays it's different, especially when I dance and moonwalk. Cause if I move around too much, break my face, your sun fall off. But hey, I'm back, I'm back. Still move to the groove, you know. Oh yeah, I'm back. Rack em. I'm back. Full of pain in my lower back, you know. I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, the king of pop is back. But I'm careful with my dancing right now, cause I'm afraid my face will crack. Get the Vaseline Bubbles. It's 133 at 560 WQM. A former firefighter in Chicago and author of Great Chicago Fires, Historic Blazes That Shaped the City, has been charged with, as, as I can't even read this, I'm so tongue-tied, it's just amazing, has been charged with setting a storage shed outside a church on fire, police said yesterday. Hmm. How do you like that? Well, former firefighter, author of Great Chicago Fires, charged with setting a storage shed outside a church on fire. Obviously, he's into fire. David Cowan, 41, faces one count of arson for allegedly starting the fire on St. Benedict Church property on the city's north side, police spokeswoman Joanne Taylor said. Cowan, a former suburban firefighter, was arrested Thursday, hours after witnesses saw him fleeing the scene of the fire. No one was hurt. Damage was minimal, Taylor said. Cowan is being held on 100 grand bail. Police haven't disclosed a possible motive, though Taylor said Cowan recently had been fired from the church and had marital problems. Well, you know what they say, fire uh, uh, starts fire. Isn't that what they say? Is it? I don't know, something like that. Maybe the fire starter was there. What was her name? Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore, when she was like a little goyle. There was no public telephone listing for David Cowan in the Chicago area. A spokesman for the Cook County Jail and Chicago Police said they didn't have the name of, a, of Cowan's attorney. Cowan co-authored a book in, about a 1958 blaze at a church school that killed more than 90 children. Well, maybe he wanted to write a book about his own exploits. What do you know? I reckon. He's a fire kind of guy. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon singular wireless lines. WQAM, hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I just wanted to tell you, you can still eat ice cream. I can what? You can still eat ice cream. No chance. You know, have you tried the carb option? Oh, man. Do you know, you know what the number one ingredient is in that stuff? What? Sorbitol. Oh, never mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to help you out. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. <clears throat> just trying to help you to an early grave. Sorbitol, baby. I mean, if you don't have the irritable bowel, if you don't have like a, a spastic well, stomach like many of then, you then will. go right ahead. Go right ahead. Although even so, it's still bad for you because those uh, those uh, no carb ice creams, man, they're just loaded with crapola, man. Oh God! In fact, crap is the operative word. <clears throat> I know, especially lately with this irritable. I'm just getting over all this irritable bowel crap. Mm-hmm. Wow, that would be the last thing I would. And you know something? I don't miss ice cream. I don't need it. It's like Dr. Atkins said, rest in peace, in spite of all the garbage they threw in his direction. And that is that after three, four days, it's like it's like any other drug. It's right. like any other addictive substance. Once you get three, four days, you go through the withdrawal, your body doesn't crave it anymore. But mm-hmm. when you start eating it, then all of a sudden that stimulates the appetite for it, and you want to eat like 50 times as much. So like just one just one score ice cream cone would probably lead me to get ten of them. Don't How do, do you it. like that? Don't. I'm not going to. I'm not getting any of them. Because at the moment, I can walk right by the case there, the ice cream case. that has got 85,000 of those and all kinds of other good stuff in there. And haagen banana nut, and Ben and Jerry's this. And I'm not interested. I don't want it. For the moment. Right. Boy, you are just a piece of turd, you know. <laughs> just got through giving him that nice flavor wave. I spent 100 bucks to give him a nice thing there to, so he can stick his, uh, his uh, finger where the moon don't shine. He can stick his uh, George Foreman uh, lean, mean grilling machine right in between is where he can stick it. Between what? The uh, closet door and the closet. 
put it away in a cupboard like we put a lot of stuff away, and then replace it with a nice flavor like the pasta that I sent you. That, that once you use it, you'll say, you know something, that old fag is right. This thing is great. It is great. So you'll see. You can be you detract all you want. I don't want the ice cream. I'm not interested. In fact, uh, the phone rang earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if it's my Omaha steaks that arrived here this morning. I can go right down there, uh, right at the stroke of 2 o'clock, and as soon as it comes on here, and go down there and have my lunch. Bring it right on up here and pop it right into your flavor wave. Nice ribeye steak. Right from frozen. Right from frozen, man. It is just a beautiful thing. Five, six, seven. I'm not selling them. I probably ought to like be their spokesman, you know what? Oh. I don't know Ron Popeil, but nevertheless. Well, it didn't occur to you to do it with the uh, Boga Burgers. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm not one of those people that has to make a quick buck off everything I peddle to the public, although here's line nine. Hello. Not there. That's probably just as well. That line nine is just a real pain in my life. Come to QAM. Hello. QAM. Come to Neverland. That wasn't bad. I come right down to it. Yeah. WQAM, hello. Hitler. That's Gilbert. What did he, what did he say? Hitler. Oh, that's Gilbert? That's his new line? Well, at least it's better yeah. than the old one. We don't have to dump it. What a, what a lunatic. <laughs> Go get yourself some mental help, okay, Coke bottle eyes. Go get yourself some help. Jesus, what are you trying to tell us? I have no line. Oh, we know that. WQAM, hello. Hey, uh, which flavor wave uh, machine do you have? The flavor wave deluxe. Uh, the manufacturer. Thane. Which one? Thane, T-H-A-N-E, Thane. Thanks. And uh, New York water comes from the Hudson Valley Reservoir, not from the Hudson River. Well, whatever. I mean, it's coming from uh, somewhere, Henry Hudson. Yeah, it's coming up to the reservoir. And uh, that's all going on. Thank you. Okay. Thane, T-H-A-N-E, Thane Direct. You can buy it online from them or like 80 million other people. In fact, if you buy it from other people, it's cheaper, like the ones I got you. Yeah, Josh was very upset. You were on vacation, but he was... Very uh, irritated over the fact that it's 132 bucks if you buy it uh, from Thane Direct. Right. Because they throw in some other kind of tchotchke that you put in a cupboard and will never use again. Mir some Miracle Pot or some crap. And you can buy it online from a zillion different websites for 99 bucks each. Well, that applies, so to, a chose, lot. Huh? That applies to a lot of products I found when ordering electronics. I find right. it cheaper from somewhere other than the manufacturer. That is correct. So if you want to... Call the toll-free number you see on TV. Go ahead. But the smarter thing is if you see a really neat product on TV you like, go online and check it out when in doubt, right. and you may find that you're going to get the exact same product uh, to a for less. Because uh, wherever else you get it, they don't have to spend all the money for the time for those infomercials. Just uh, order it and forget it. I mean, don't forget it. In fact, I'm thinking right now, during this break, I'm going to go check my phone message and make sure it was those stakes that arrived. And not just something like the Book of Brian does. Not, not that we want to downplay the Book of Brian does, you know. But if you had a choice between getting a nice package of Omaha steaks or uh, one of those CDs from Book of Brian, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'd have to hear the CD. Oh. What about this one, for what it's worth? Book of Brian did this? I don't think so. When it comes to entertainment, it's Neil Rogers. Neil Rogers. It's Sports Radio 5. Radio. Suggested or faxed in growing up Gotti for the poll today. That's good news. Hey, hey. Oh! That's a good sign. Nobody called in and suggested Nick and Jessica oh! or the Ashley yeah. Simpson show. Oh! Or uh, right? uh, Britney uh, Spears Chaotic. Or Britney and uh, Kevin uh, Feeder. Uh, oh! Yeah. yeah. Feeder tube. Uh, a feeder what? Cube. A growing number of senior American military officers in Iraq have concluded that there is no long-term military solution to an insurgency that's killed thousands of Iraqis and more than 1,300 U.S. troops in the past two years. Instead, officers say the only way to win the guerrilla war is through Iraqi politics, an arena that so far has been crippled by divisions between Shiites and Sunnis, uh, etc. and so on. 
I think the more accurate way to approach this right now is to concede that this insurgency is not going to be settled. The terrorist and the terrorism in Iraq is not going to be settled through military options or military operations. Brigadier General Donald Alston, the chief U.S. military spokesman in Iraq, said last week in a comment that echoes what other senior officers say. It's going to be settled in the political process, he'd be saying. Oh, look at that. New York City chopper crashed near Wall Street area of Manhattan. Flotation in the water, and uh, the helicopter now sits upside down in the East River there. Um, so is it possible that there was a safe landing and then it was upset by uh, the rough seas in the... Uh... Well, we don't know. But we put it up. Uh, like, uh, General George W. Casey, the top U.S. commander in Iraq, expressed similar sentiments, calling the military efforts the Pillsbury Doughboy idea, pressing the insurgency in one area, only causing it to rise elsewhere. How do you like that? Yeah. The Pillsbury Doughboy, where they <laughs> stick him in the puppet and, uh, yeah. Like in Baghdad, Casey said during an interview with two newspaper reporters, including one from Knight Ritter last week, we push in Baghdad. They're down to about less than a car bomb a day in Baghdad over the last week, but in north center Iraq, they've gone up. The political process will be the decisive element, he'd be saying. The recognition that a military solution is not in the offing has led U.S. and Iraqi officials to signal that they're willing to negotiate with insurgent groups or their intermediaries. It has evolved in the course of normal business, said a senior U.S. diplomatic official in Baghdad, who spoke, of course, on the condition of anonymity because of U.S. policy to defer to the Iraqi government on Iraqi political matters. This message is markedly different from previous statements by U.S. officials who spoke of quashing the insurgency by rounding up or killing dead-enders loyal to former dictator Saddam Hussein. As recently as two weeks ago in a Memorial Day interview on CNN's Larry King Live, Vice President Dick Taney said he believed the insurgency was in his last throes. Uh -huh. Another pack of lies. But the violence has continued unabated, even though 44 of the 55 Iraqis portrayed in the military's famous deck of cards have been killed or captured, including Saddam. Lieutenant Colonel Frederick P. Wellman, who works with the task force overseeing the training of Iraqi security troops, said the insurgency doesn't seem to be running out of new recruits, a dynamic fueled by tribal members seeking revenge for relatives killed in fighting. We can't kill them all, Wellman said. When I kill one, I create three. Last month was one of the deadliest since President Bush declared the end of major combat operations in May 2003. At least 26 troops have been killed by insurgents so far in June, bringing to 1311 the number of U.S. soldiers killed by hostile action. Another 391 have died as a result of accidents or illness. The Iraqi interior minister said last week the insurgency has killed 12,000 Iraqis during the past two years. Didn't say how he arrived at the figure. He just made it up. It's a lot more than that. It's over every, uh, other people say it's over 100,000 altogether. Right. But nevertheless, we're doing our best to bring democracy. Now, what's the story with this helicopter, with this chopper? I do not. It's down in the East River in New York. We're a down helicopter, and we are trying to respond as quickly as possible to help ensure that people are out safely. Tell us what kind of response you have ordered there. We have uh, several different boats of uh, varying... Oh, it's Sky Miles O'Brien. Mr. Cutter, Captain Walker, which is... So what kind of boat is that over there? He said... You ferry! It's a ferry. Now, what he just said? Something like that. The Senate yesterday, th this, is, this is just, oh, man, makes you want to gag. It's 2005, okay? And the Senate yesterday formally apologized for having rejected decades of pleas to make lynching a federal crime as scores of victims' descendants watched from the chamber's gallery. On a voice vote and without opposition, the Senate passed a resolution expressing its regrets to the relatives as well as to the nearly 5,000 Americans, mostly black males, who were documented as having been lynched from 1880 to 1960. These deaths occurred without trials, mostly in the South, of course, often with the knowledge of local officials who allowed mob lynchings to become picture-taking public spectacles. During this period, nearly 200 anti-lynching bills were introduced in Congress, three of which passed the House of Representatives, but despite the support of the legislation by seven U.S. presidents, the measures died in the Senate, with much of the opposition coming from Southern lawmakers who raised procedural roadblocks. Th these are laws against lynching. Are you following that? Yeah. You mind your business. Such legislation would have made lynching a federal crime allowed the U.S. government to prosecute those responsible, including local law enforcement officers. Dan Duster, a descendant of Ida B. Wells, former slave who became an anti-lynching crusader, praised senators who publicly backed the resolution of apology and scored those who did not. No ma lawmaker openly opposed the measure, but 20 of the 100 senators who had not signed a statement in support of it uh, shortly before the vote was taken on nearly empty Senate floor. It doesn't, it doesn't mention the 20. I'd sure like to have the list. I'd sure like to know where they're from. I think it's politics. They're afraid of losing votes from the people of prejudice, Duster said, of those who did not sign the statement of support. The resolution was first proposed last year by Senators Mary Landrieu, Louisiana Democrat, and George Allen, Virginia Republican, after they read the book Without Sanctuary, Lynching Photography in America, a Pictorial History by James Allen. 
The more I learned about this terrorism in America, the more committed I became to doing something positive in passing this resolution, Landrieu said. The Senate failed these Americans, said Allen. If we truly want to move forward, we must admit that failure and learn from it. The resolution expresses apologies not only to the victims of lynchings, but also to their descendants, nearly 200 of whom came to cap the Capitol to witness passage of the measure. Also there was James Cameron, 91, believed to be the only known lynching survivor. Cameron was arrested in August 1930 About 30, man. in Marion, Indiana, where he was taken to jail along with two of his friends for the murder of a white man and suspected rape of a white woman. A mob broke into the jail and pulled the three out. Cameron's two friends were hanged and a noose was placed around Cameron's neck, then a 16-year-old shoeshine boy. But the, as the noose was tightened, a voice reportedly shouted out that Cameron was guilty of no crime. He was returned to his cell, later convicted of being an accessory to the white man's death. He was pardoned in 1933 by then-Governor Evan Bayh, now a Democratic U.S. Senator from Indiana. 1993, did I say 33? 93. How do you like that? Lynchings. Well, we want to apologize uh, here in the said We're thinking about it. We're not too sure if we want the feds to... And, of course, the, those who opposed it in these other uh, bills that were proposed, they, they did it on the grounds of what well, infringement on states' rights. Right. States' rights to allow lynching. That sounds like a great American tradition to me, doesn't it? You mind your business up north, boy. Man, what a rednecky country you live in. Sports Queer Radio is what the Q's for in QAM. Here's a little number I wrote the other day while out duck hunting with a judge. Quack. Thank you very much, the FCC. Thank you very much for fining me. Five thousand bucks a few, so I'm really out of luck. That's more than Heidi Fleiss was charging me. So, thank you very much, the FCC. For proving that free speech just isn't free. The clear channel's a dear channel, so Howard Stern must go. Attorney General Ashcroft doesn't like strong words, and so he's charging twice as much as all the drugs for Rush Limbaugh. So thank you all so very much. So thank you very much, dear Mr. Bush, for heroically sitting on your tush. For Halliburton, Enron, all the companies who fail. Let's send them a clear signal and stick Martha straight in jail. She's an uppity rich bitch, and at least she isn't male. So f*** you all so very much. Absolutely. So f*** you dick Cheney too. F*** you and f*** everything you do. Your pacemaker must be a fake, you haven't got a heart. As far as I'm concerned, you're just a pasty-faced old fart. And as for Condoleezza, she's an intellectual tart. So f*** you all so very much. Yes. So f*** you very much, the EPA, for giving all Alaska's oil away. It really is a bummer when I can't fill my hummer. The ozone's a no-go zone now that Arnold's here to say. The nuclear intergames are going to take place in L.A. So f*** you all so very much. Oh, do, 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 do. So what the planet fails, let's save the great white males. And f*** you all so very much. Do, 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 do. Exactly. Okay, 159, Mo coming up next. What one TV show today do you never miss? None. 132. They all suck. 132. Say uh, none of them that good. 24 has got 59. Well, that must be pretty good. We've got to see it. Yeah. Uh, 60 Minutes, 54, Daily Show, 51, A Shield, 51, Deadwood, 48, South Park, 34, Simpsons, 33, Chappelle Show, About 30, man. Uh, Jeopardy, About 30, man. Sopranos, 25, CSI, 24, Desperate Housewives, 23, That 70 Show, 21, How Sad, Judge Judy, 17, Smallville, 17, Law and Order, 15, Battlestar Galactica, 13, That Family Guy, the, whatever it is, The Family Guy, 11, and everybody else, like, single digits. Bye, bye, bye!